Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the penultimate round of the World Senior Team Championship here in Struga on Lake Ohrid. Uh, we start our coverage of the penultimate round with the uh, derby on board one, possibly a decisive match for the uh, gold medals. Uh, and it's a surprise, perhaps, uh, that we see Iceland there, because yesterday, when we left off uh, the live commentary, we had this one game ongoing, Hjartarsson Georgiev, which was a draw. And I said, okay, this will be a draw, and I happily went to, to eat my dinner, uh, only to be surprised some time afterwards, an hour or so after, that actually Hjartarsson had managed to win. And this was really a surprise, as I expected uh, Georgiev to, to hold a draw, and it was a draw. And yet, he, after, um, I think it was a move 901 or so, so over 100 moves, he eventually faltered. In fact, you can see the, um, you can see the, uh, the final of this game in the report I wrote for the FIDE website and also posted on social media uh, also by FIDE's Twitter account so you can check this uh, you can check this uh, the, the finale of that game there uh, we do have some some technical issues with the live feed from the playing hall and uh, also some sound coming from the other computer uh, which uh, uh, if well when the technical personnel comes back to hopefully we'll fix it unless it's too annoying if it's too annoying just tell me I'll just hop across and uh, shut it down so let's start at, at our uh, usual overview of the games on board one we have Hjartarsson against David and the game starts as the English opening, so C4, E5, G3, okay, maybe the sound is coming from here, just a second, okay, sound problem solved, sorry about that, it was coming actually from this computer, so C4, E5, G3, C6, uh, black can also start with knight F6 and then play G6, and then play C6, but the immediate C6 is also possible. And now white has two possible ways to react. One is knight f3, provoking e4 as played in the game. The other one is d4. So knight f3 played, e4, knight d4, d5, cd5, queen d5, and e3. Uh, in the past this was considered very easy and smooth for black. Probably still is. Um, what's changed is that Modern computers uh, and uh, well, modern preparation uh, no longer uh, distinguishes between problem or no problem lines because most of the solid openings are no problem lines for black, so everything is e explored. And even some lines that were considered good for black and they still objectively are are explored, and chances are uh, searched in those lines as well, and this is one of those lines. So E3 played by Hjartarsson here, and David thinking for a bit. Board 2, we have Godena against Peterson, and we have the Alapin, Godena's lifelong choice against the Sicilian. So C3, D5 by Peterson, take on D5, Queen D5, Knight F3, and now G6. This is considered the, let's say, fighting option against the Alapin, as uh, black can get the bishop and in most lines there aren't any uh, immediate simplifications on the other hand uh, white very often achieves this uh, position i was talking about in the previous streams which was three against two abc against ab on the queen side as d after d4 these pawns are exchanged uh, Godena thinking for three minutes now. I'm pretty sure he knows his theory here. Uh, probably just uh, checking or rechecking and so on. But we, we should never be surprised when Godena is thinking. Uh, okay, so uh, 
g6 d4 will likely follow here uh, followed by dc5 bishop e3 that that's how usually theory goes board three we have uh, arnason against ortega and a very rare choice in the Rui Lopez and there's the Cordell variation, bishop c5. So it's a, it's a rare choice and probably intended as a surprise. Here the best move for white actually is c3. Uh, and uh, why c3 is played is be exactly because of the um, because of the uh, line chosen by black in this game after short castle which is knight d4 and now knight d4 bishop d4 c3 bishop will draw back to b6 this is uh, or at least should be acceptable for for black bishop b6 played yeah now d4 will, will happen and uh, uh, then I think c6 is the move, the bishop escapes, d6 and so on. So this should be, let's say, okay for black and perhaps the first uh, opening surprise in this match or maybe a small even opening victory for Italy, if we can call it so. So d4, c6, players are playing pretty fast. Where will the bishop go? a4, c4, e2, d3, maybe even so we will see board four we have belia against toralson and we have a classical sicilian d6 the rouser attack bishop g5 richter rouser attack e6 queen d2 a6 short long castle bishop d7 this is the currently the most popular line in the rouser for black uh, it was for example it, uh, the, the most famous player and the most consistent player playing it for all of his career is uh, former European champion Zdenko Kožul, a grandmaster from Croatia, if you didn't know. He's been playing this for ever since the 80s and still plays it. So another modern, let's say, approach here is involves this very early exchange on c6. The, normally the main moves have been f4, and f3 but Belia starts with knight c6 bishop c6 and now f3 it can transpose obviously but uh, what w when uh, white plays the with f3 sometimes the bishop draws back to e3 h4 g h5 g4 is the usual plan and so on so white does not rush with capturing on c6 but by capturing first some uh, possibilities have been cut down and there is also the option of the bishop retreating to f4 and putting pressure on the d6 pawn so this is already still some theory we will see uh, let's move on to the next match uh, no Pia Kramling is not here no she's not here let's move on to the next match which is usa against uruguay a surprise pairing perhaps to see uruguay so high the reason for this is that uh, the the top teams have already played each other uh, and uh, what happens now in the last rounds is that they can get uh, weaker opponents or uh, a team that has suddenly won uh, one or two matches and, and springs up and is kind of let's say caught by the top teams in the pairings so this is one of such pairings uh, there the usa is heavily uh, overrated when it comes to uruguay for example on board one we have kaidanov against brasso and the difference is al almost 500 rating points that doesn't mean that the games will be easy today in chess there are no easy games irrelevant who you play uh, so while uh, a win for usa is expected well the games can still be tough so we have a catalan on board one knight f3 knight f6 c4 e6 g3 d5 d4 the same move order Yermolinsky used yesterday d takes c4 and bishop g2 now surprisingly 
black is thinking for eight minutes uh, normally the choice is done is made at home during preparation black has really a lot of options here I will just mention them from left to right a6 is one c6 is another knight c6 is another c5 is another one then there are bishop moves bishop d7 bishop b4 check so we have okay one two three four five six options and there is also the somewhat rare but currently i mean it got some attention the move knight bd7 uh, intending something like rook b8 and, and b5 for example so a lot of choices and like i said normally uh, this choice of line is, is made during preparation but perhaps Brasso was surprised we can't say board 2 Escoffet against Elvest we have the modern e4 g6 d4 bishop g7 knight c3 c6 knight f3 d5 h3 this is considered the best line knight f6 this is a, the more provocative line uh, for for black mm, now white plays the most critical move e5 even though something let's say mm, calmer and be like bishop d3 is possible e5 knight e4 but now white actually does not go for the most critical line which is takes on e4 knight g5 and there is a lot of theory enforcing lines involved here White plays bishop d3, this shouldn't really worry black, after knight c3, b c c5, short castle knight c6, we have some sort of a French structure for white, with these doubled pawns, like in, like in the win hour, and, um, but what happens is that black has not boxed in, his bishop as in the French with e6 and that bishop can still for example come to f5 and exchange for the white's good bishop the drawback for black is that this bishop on g7 is not a very active piece still if you imagine something like let's say bishop f5 bishop f5 g5 and e6 then black establishes this solid French structure and the bishop can be rerouted bishop f8 then bishop e7 and so on uh, this is what, uh, again, this is uh, more than 500 rating difference. And a common approach uh, for stronger players to go for some strategically complex uh, middle game, rookie one played, even if not entirely sound, uh, when they play weaker opponents in the attempt to outplay them and uh, well, win. Obviously, I'm talking when they play with black. Board 3, Novikov coming back after the loss to uh, Ortega, d4, b5, the so-called Polish defense. Not a very good opening, though it has to be said that it was played by Spassky against Petrosian in their World Championship match, the first one in 1966. Spassky somehow drew this game, but that was in spite of the opening, not because of it. e4, bishop b7, bishop takes b5. The alternative is to go bishop d3 and uh, preserve the central pawn. Bishop b5 is a more forcing option. The point being that uh, white speeds up the development. Knight f3, knight f6, castle e6, and now with c4 still builds a, uh, a good pawn center. Uh, he will also play knight c3 and gain tempo by attacking the bishop on e4. So bishop e7, knight c3, bishop b7, queen e2, castles, rook d1 and c6. Bishop a4 will happen, moving away. And then likely black will push d5. Okay, bishop a4 <coughs> and d5. That's at least what I expect. When uh, uh, white could try to go c5, and then establish uh, okay queen a5 not so not the move i expected i guess it's possible 
Um, again, huge rating difference in favor of the American player. So we will see uh, how this one goes further. And on board four, we have Barbosa against Yermolinsky. And we have a Khan Sicilian, A6, and A3. This is a, a, an interesting moment. But White just uh, misplaced it, I think, later on. Actually, on the next move. I was going to say that even, uh, let's say, casual players of 1700 and um, they follow theory, they follow the latest developments, they follow social media, they follow everything. And in fact, this move A3 was not that long ago uh, proposed by. Uh, uh, a very strong in correspondence player, international master Nikolaos Ntirlis, a Greek international master, who is pretty well known for his opening uh, knowledge and erudition. And in his uh, Twitter thread, he was discussing various options against the uh, Khan variation. And he also bases his uh, opening research on a lot of correspondence and computer games. So uh, one of the ideas he proposed against this was the move A3. The other one was a move H3. And uh, I don't know, 20 years ago you would laugh at this. Today uh, we all take it seriously simply because the engines are not against it. So we have our god nearby to confirm or not ideas like A3 and H3. However, after knight f6, uh, white played knight c3 and that's not what was suggested. The, the suggested move was bishop d3, in fact. I, I can also check because uh, it's also curious uh, to, to remind myself of what he was proposing here. So, no, it's not here. Oh, maybe I. Yeah, a3. And if knight f6. Oh, in fact. In fact, knight c3 was also good. So, yeah, bishop d3 was proposed, yes, but knight c3 is also okay. Okay, but after d6. Mm, we have a uh, strange, uh, let's say, classical Scheveningen when white has played the strange move a3. But a3 long term is not that bad because black will play b5 and then there will not be a threat against b4. And in fact, here it is where white goes, let's say, uh, somewhat, I mean, I would say wrong. Uh, but in, in inverted commas, as uh, this is in relation to what modern theory suggests. In fact, here g4 is a very important move, like, some, like something like the Keres attack in the uh, uh, Scheveningen, only with moves a3 and a6 in inserted, and uh, it is quite dangerous. However, white went bishop e3, and now it is really uh, not that critical even though it still depends how black plays because okay black played b5 and now i think white just really mm, uh, makes it not interesting from a theoretical aspect because uh, had he played f3 without bishop e2 as he did and let's say in bishop b7 queen d2 and 97 yeah the move a3 in fact again uh, laughable 20 years ago is quite uh, heavily favored by modern engines in this uh, English attack version of the Scheveningen. and it can also rise from the Nidorf and it's not a very popular option it used to be massively popular in the 90s and the noughties when Kasparov was using it almost all the time uh, yet in modern times it's not a very popular choice for the black players when facing the English attack Partly because uh, the, this move a3 
is actually more poisonous than it may appear at first sight. Stopping B4, in the past it was just uh, uh, automatically concluded that this just offers a hook for black on the queen side and so on. Modern engine said generalities, step aside, concrete is the god. Concrete is god. Yeah, so turns out A3 is quite unpleasant. But white played bishop e2, bishop e7, f3, knight bd7, queen d2, and I think bishop e2 is sort of a superfluous move in these English attack positions. Uh, it was better had white played castle or g4 instead, as the bishop uh, is not particularly well placed on e2. Uh, first and foremost, second, it, it robs white of the options to go bishop d3 in one move or something like h4 and then maybe to h3. So thanks to this, um, thanks to this suboptimal development with bishop e2, black already has a good game here. Now let's move on to the next match, which is Montenegro against England. England won. Let me just, let's just check the pairings. Okay, yeah. So on board one, <coughs> we have Nikčević against Adams. And we have a queen's gambit declined. D4, knight f6, knight f3, and now d5. You see how top players uh, vary their choices. Uh, against Olafsson, Adams played, and I, against Kirill Georgiev, Adams played e6. And then against Kirill Georgiev, we had g3, c5. And against Olafsson, we had the queen's Indian, c4, b6. I'm sorry, c4, and b6. Here, after knight f3, he goes d5 and goes for the queen's gambit declined. Another uh, main opening for, for Adams, the queen's gambit declined, is part of his repertoire. So, uh, he's basically, as you can see, uh, mixing up his established repertoire. And even this is problematic for, for, the, for the opponent. What he had to do was prepare against all Adams' main openings, which were, uh, let's say, Nimzo and Queen's Indian combination, and the Queen's Gambit declined. So here we have a Queen's Gambit declined, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop f4. Uh, today this is the white's main attempt at something, at least, in the Queen's Gambit declined, as the formerly much more popular bishop g5, uh, has been, I would say, more or less neutralized thanks to the plethora of options that black has here. One is the direct d takes c4. Yeah, that's one option that actually works nice for, for black. After h6, the lines with bishop f6 have been neutralized already some time ago. And after bishop h4, there is again dc4. But even after the main line, let's say castles e3, the three main options that black has, the Tartakover variation with b6, a favorite of both Karpov and Kasparov in the 80s, is still extremely solid. Lasker's variation, 94, even more perhaps. Uh, it was used with great success by Anand in that famous last game of his match with Topalov in Sofia in 2010, where he famously won a great game with black. And perhaps the most solid of all, the most even orthodox move knight bd7, revamped by Kromnik in the, uh, uh, let's say, mid-teens of this century, the idea being just to go c5 with simplifications in the center. And for this reason, bishop g5 is not so popular nowadays. Therefore, bishop f4, castle z3, and black here, Adams played, went for the move b6. One of the three main options for black, the standard, uh, you could say traditionally main line is the move c5. Knight bd7 also received a lot of uh, attention and uh, exploration in the past I think even two decades, more or less, if not more. 
The idea is similar to the Kramnik line to push C5, also extremely solid. And the third, perhaps the most fighting option, if you will, B6. So you see, it's a small difference between these three moves, but Adams chooses the most, let's say, the, the line that offers him the most chances uh, to perhaps play for more than, than just equality. Uh, this, the difference between the lines may not be that big, but even small differences can matter. Options here for white are to take on d5 as he did, or not to take, develop the bishop for example, bishop p2, bishop d3, that allows dc4 for example, rook c1, a3, moving the queen to b3 or c2, these are all options for white. He went for cd5, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, and now bishop d3. Taking on c7 is a dangerous uh, gift to accept. Uh, there are some really forcing lines, I think they're starting something like knight a6 and then check on b4 and so on. I don't... Uh, um, I have looked at this uh, some time ago, quite some time ago, and this is not... Uh, white just risks uh, after bishop b7, let's say, rook c8 and so on, risks uh, suffering a lot for that extra pawn so it's more sensible not to take so bishop d3 but now c5 it's very likely that um, black will equalize what remains to be seen is whether the position will still contain some uh, let's say chances to uh, to play for more than just uh, equality Adams's repertoire is such that it's a classical repertoire, having solid openings with black against both d4 and e4, and sometimes this makes it more difficult for him to play for a win against players who just want to kill the game off. So I think this game will be interesting from that aspect, whether first and foremost white will, will want to kill the game off, and second, whether if that happens, Adams will still be able to find uh, chances to keep the game alive. Board 2, we have Ems coming back to the team against Pajkovic and we have the Gioco Piano, knight, starting with knight f6, inviting the sharp lines after knight g5, but Ems just decides to stick to the calmer waters of the Gioco Piano, d3, bishop c5, c3 castles, knight bd2 and d5. The, the idea of knight bd2 is in a way to discourage d5, even though d5 is still possible. So e5, knight d5, knight e4. This is the idea to get to e4 quickly. Bishop e7 and our short castle. In these lines, the bishop usually drops back to b6. Here it dropped back to e7. So perhaps this is, this is some sort of a uh, small moral victory for, for white. This being said, it's obviously still very theoretical. Miljanic against Fleer. We have the Spanish, the Rui Lopez. Fleer has been playing this all his life. Knight f6 and our queen e2. The Worrell attack, I mentioned it in one of the previous uh, commentaries. Famously used by Nigel Short in his triumphant match against Karpov in 1992. Uh, I also think that the, the reason uh, Boro played Queen e2 was to avoid the open variation, yeah, which is, which is a, a variation that Fleer regularly plays. So Queen e2, so b5, bishop b3, bishop c5, going for an active development. Bishop is more active on c5 than on e7. c3 castles, a4, bishop b7. It's always a question how to react to this a4 move, whether to go bishop b7 or to go rook b8. Both moves have pros and cons. Uh, bishop b7, for example, uh, completes the development and the bishop can be active on the long diagonal, though with white still keeping the option of playing d3 
that bishop may also turn out to be somewhat passive. On the other hand, rook b8 um, keeps the option of developing the bishop on the uh, its original diagonal h3 c8. On the other hand, after a b a b, why a black would have abandoned the a file. So pros and cons everywhere. Fleer went for bishop b7, short castle, and now h6. Useful move, stopping possible pins with bishop g5. I expect now something like d3 to be played. And then likely d6. So we have a typical Spanish torture, yeah, as they call it. Board 3, Keith Arkel against Predragnikac. And we have the Dutch starting with d4 g6, c4 f5. Lenin the Dutch, knight f3, knight f6, g3. Keith likes his bishops fianchettoed. Bishop g2, d6, and now knight c3. Uh, many ways to play against the Dutch. Uh, normally, let's say castles, castles, and now um, b3. I mentioned this. It was played by Chapman some days ago. It's a very solid line intending to fianchetto the bishop. Nothing wrong with knight c3, castles, castles, and now knight c6. One of the main lines in the uh, in the Dutch. Here the main move is d5, and then black can go knight e5 or knight a5. And both these lines have been extensively analyzed. Rook e1 is another move intending e4. So black plays knight e4, stopping physically e4, takes on e4, knight g5, attacking the pawn on e4, but abandoning the pawn on d4. So takes on e d4, takes on e4, c6, e3, knight f5, queen b3, queen b6. So I, I'm not sure how, for how long they follow theory, maybe this also is still theory. Mm. They played relatively fast for a line that required some calculation, so that's what I think that there was some theory involved here. Uh, well, the position is interesting because white has the more solid pawn structure because these pawns on e7 and d6 uh, kind of difficult to move if the e pawn moves then d6 becomes a weak pawn and if it doesn't then black lacks some uh, lacks some uh, some space in the center on the other hand if the pawns stay as they are the long diagonal for the bishop remains open uh, white here has some issues with the development of the dark squared bishop so quick kid goes queen c2 and it's uh, perhaps his idea is to go rook b1, b3, and bishop b2 to exchange the mo black's most active piece. And the knight on e4 also discourages the movement of the pawn from e7. So if white manages to exchange the dark squared bishops, then he can just put his rooks in the center, especially in the d file. And then can try to advance, move the knight and push e4, chase away that knight from, from f5. So white has some long-term plan. Uh, what black can do instead is less clear. That knight on f5 has only one square, which is h6, and it doesn't really want to go there. Unless it's some regrouping like knight h6, knight f7. Yeah, in order to support e5 when the pawn on d6 would be protected. But it looks kind of awkward. So we'll see how Nikac goes about uh, solving this coordination issue connected with the knight on f5. So we'll also quickly look at the match on board 4, which is Canada against North Macedonia Al Khalid. Uh, most likely, uh, yesterday's loss. Uh, was critical in terms of chances for the host team to fight for the medals. Most likely they are out of contention, though obviously they'll hope to win their matches. Yeah. 
So let's. So this is not a match that is vital for the top spots, but just to, we'll have a quick look at it, just in case, yeah, to see what's going on. So on board one, Plotkin against Georgiev, e4, e5. So you see here Georgiev varying from the knight of that he used to beat uh, Merva and David. So knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, another Italian, this time not a Gioco Piano after d3, knight f6, but the uh, what is considered very, very dull uh, four knights. Uh, Italian, uh, it was considered dull, nowadays it's, believe it or not, all the rage. Uh, everybody's playing it, honestly I don't know why. But uh, they do. So d6, one of the let's say three main moves. Black is can choose to start with a6 or d6 is in the game or h6 depending what he wants to allow, what he wants to pre avoid. Gergiev starts with d6. Now bishop e3, bishop b6, h3, h6. Yeah, castles, castles. Rook e1, rook e8. So pretty solid and rather dull a3, bishop e6, so you see it's almost symmetrical, takes on e6, knight d5, if white is to do something, uh, he is confined to two ideas, one is to jump to d5 and the other one is to push d4, here pushing d4 doesn't really bring much, because after exchanges on, on d4, e4 is hanging, therefore he jumps knight d5, Capture, take on e3, rook e3 and knight e7. The idea is to play c6 and get rid of that knight. This can easily uh, just lead to massive simplifications and uh, likely draw. Even though uh, black is a major favorite when it comes to the rating. Okay, knight is 7 played here. Black is a big favorite when it comes to the rating, though uh, solid play uh, still White being a feeder master, uh, well, looks like <coughs> white won't be discontent with the draw. Board two, we have Nedef against Baron, and this is very, very strange. And I would not tend to trust the notation because. First move is d4 and never, never plays d4. <laughs> so I will make sure I uh, I confirm this when I take a break and go down to the playing hall. Native playing d4, that's already, well, something of a first. Anyway, it's some, I, like I said, I, I can't confirm that we are following the right game. So there's some sort of a Dutch with bishop f4 and d5, knight e5, takes on e5, knight f3, 4, check, bishop d7, knight g5, a6, knight e6, queen c8, takes, takes, queen d4 and c6. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, it looks very, very, very dubious for black. Just long castle or, I don't know, maybe queen e5, threatening knight c7 looks very very dubious for black so okay I'll just suspend my judgment uh, before checking board 3 Findlay against Tanoyoski Nidorf that's also pretty strange because Tanoyoski usually doesn't play the Nidorf he has played either the Dragon or the Accelerated Fianchetto here, bishop, after bishop e2, he does transpose to some dragon-like structures, g6, g4, this is very sharp, trying to take advantage yeah, of the bishop being on e2 and being more aggressive against the dragon setup in the knight of. So knight, bishop g7, g5, knight fd7, bishop e3. So this is theory, sharp theory, uh, white's play is rather simple, queen d2, long castle, and then just start pushing pawns, yeah. Stanowski is an experienced dragon player, so he knows what's coming and likely will find some ways to deal with this. And on board 4 we have Kutirov against Doherty and we had a London system.
d4 e6, bishop f4. Not a usual opening for Kutirov, but I suppose nowadays anybody and everybody can play the London. So c5, e3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, knight bd2, d5. It's a standard development and uh, normal line for, for black. c6, bishop d6, bishop g3, queen e7. Mm, I would have, well, I guess queen c7, dc5 is what black wanted to avoid. So that's why he put the queen on e7, even though I'm pretty sure there are other options as well. So knight e5. Bishop e5, d e5. Again, not sure exactly what the theory says. I'm pretty sure there is a move like knight d7, or at least there is an idea like knight d7, trying to wrestle the control from white of that important square on e5, when perhaps white can go f4, I suppose. And then some f6 ideas may be possible, and so on. Be that as it may, black took on e5, d takes e5, keeping the dark squared bishop, basically keeping the bishop pair. Knight d7, knight f3, defending the pawn, f6. Not sure this is, well, maybe it is okay, maybe not. Uh, perhaps black was worried about some bishop h4 ideas, embarrassing someone, the queen. Yet f6 opens up the diagonal for the bishop. Now if black could just uh, uh, follow up with some quick e5, he may be okay, but that's not so simple because d5 is hanging. So knight f6, bishop d3, now and now castles. <coughs> Perhaps there is something to be said about e5 uh, as... Uh, It's a desirable push for black because it opens his bishop and establishes this big pawn center as a way of compensation for the pair of bishops. As after castle as he did, knight e5 now establishes some blockade on e5. So, I think kind of a strange opening more from black than from white. So it's... Um, we will see how this goes. Let's take a quick look now at the games in the S65 section. So I'll just look at the pairings here. We have Italy again playing on board one, just as in the S50 section, only that here they don't really have a chance to fight for the medals. Okay, uh, maybe I can just check the comments before we go on to that one. Let me see. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, a fragrance enthusiast. Yeah, correspondence. I am. I, yeah, I think he is a feeder master in, in over the board. But need to check. <coughs> Ph Urba, feed out of good commentators. Well, ask feeder. I wasn't contracted by FIDE, I was contracted by the organizers, so you should ask FIDE if they are out of good commentators. If you don't like my commentating, you're free to switch it off. My voice is sleepy. Oh, then I would propose you take a look at Tanya Sajdev. I'm pretty sure she will shake you up. So, uh, to each its own. That's why there are so many commentators you can choose whomever you like to listen to anyway if you're tired just then continue listening to me i'm pretty sure you'll have a pretty good nap oh he's not an fm okay now i'm kind of uh, let me check yeah <laughs> uh, i will check nikos's title uh, on the fide website no, you're actually right. He's not uh, an FM. I'm just surprised that his standard rating is 1800, as his knowledge of, of openings is quite extensive. 
probably due to um, probably due to uh, being a correspondence player so he studies a lot with engines and uh, and is well versed in this it's okay uh, that's the the comments and let's move on to the games so Garcia Palermo against Knack d4 d5 knight f3 e6 c4 knight f6 and now bishop g5 so the queen's gambit declined we saw this move order used by Kirill Georgiev in some of the earlier rounds uh, he didn't make much out of it I think it was against uh, Shabalov I think or Kaidanov one of the American players mm. and here it it's there are pros and cons for for playing this obviously i remember it was preferred by capablanca at one stage of his career his idea because in that time everybody was playing queen's gambit declined yeah and uh, his idea was that let's say something like three castles to develop the knight actually to d2 and in this way discourage the capture on c4 as then knight c4 would be quite good for white and in view that, that there will be control over the e5 square nowadays this is not considered very uh, critical in those days it was an interesting idea that Capablanca uh, found uh, that he could use if black did not intend to play the queen's gambit declined after let's say the more common knight c3 after bishop g5 he has other options one is to take on c4 and the other one is to play h6 and after bishop f6 queen f6 knight e2 we see the idea again the idea is to uh, defend that pawn on c4 with the knight and discourage the capture on c4 so g6 queen b3 c6 and now we have transposed to the so-called moscow uh, variation of the semislav i'll just show you that usually arises after knight c3 c6 bishop g5 h6 bishop f6 queen f6 and now let's say e3 with the major difference that the knight is not on c3 as in the moscow variation but rather on d2 and white uses that fact to play g3 and fianchetto his bishop instead of playing e3 one way or another white's main plan here is to push e4 so uh, um, that's White's main plan in these structures. Uh, the difference is how he uh, wishes to employ it, whether by playing, let's say, e3, bishop d3, and e4, or g3, and then going for for e4. Uh, Garcia Palermo decides to go with g3. So bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, castles, knight d7, and e4. That's the white achieved the main plan black now has a choice uh, all three options are possible to keep the tension yeah maybe just uh, but then he needs to calculate what happens if white just takes that pawn on d5 the game will open up for the bishop so that is something to consider or take whether on c4 or on e4 so it's all, all options are possible in fact knack has been thinking for a very long time more than half an hour so it's probably a decision he was likely thinking for the on, okay queen d8 played so the idea is for example if everything is chopped off on d5 like this white black can probably play something like knight b6 and after the exchange of queens there is this pressure on d4 and um, a likely compensation thanks to the control over the d5 square So for now, black decides to keep the tension in the center. Board 2, Meister against Mesa. So we have a Queen's Gambit declined again here, just a proper one. Knight c3, Bishop e7, and now c takes d5. Normally this is not considered critical in the Queen's Gambit declined. However, uh, lately there have been games where the so-called harmless lines in the exchange variation like this one have been used by the top players and with some success as well 
So after e d5, bishop g5, c6, queen c2, and now knight bd7. Mm, I'm not sure what uh, White had in mind in case of the uh, main move here, g6, which ensures that um, Black will play bishop f5. Whether he, he intended to go e3, bishop d5, bishop f5, bishop d3, or he intended to go for the sharper lines with e4. Let's say bishop f6, bishop f6, e4. Which we saw in one of our previous uh, streams. It was. Uh, I can't remember the game, but I remember the variation that we it was played. Uh, one way or another, just black transposed to the usual lines with knight bd7, and here the exchange variation is considered already quite okay for white. e3, already knight b6, this is weird. Uh, if black wanted to go knight h5, he could have done that immediately. Knight h5, forcing the exchange of the bishops. You know, an another normal move is obviously short castle, but knight b6, I um, really don't know why black play this because uh, the, the, in some lines the knight is good on b6 especially after white has played uh, along the plan of the minority attack with b4 as the knight then can use the weakened b c4 square but playing knight b6 so early doesn't look too good so bishop d3 normal play by white knight h5 exchange of bishops castles and g6 in fact, we do have some sort of a transposition as in these lines the knight sometimes goes to b6 to free the development of the bishop, whether by bishop b6 or sometimes knight g7 and bishop f5. So, okay, and white goes a4 trying to harass that knight immediately, and now a5, another move I don't particularly like to be honest as it just weakens these these squares on the queen side on the other hand it does fix the b4 square so again pros and cons everywhere with a4 a5 in inserted it's already clear that black will never castle long and that becomes too risky um, so yeah, about Ntirlis, yeah, he is very good, uh, and uh, yeah, I haven't read his books, I know that he writes them, and normally they are well accepted, so uh, I would expect them to be good. So White is thinking now, after a4, a5, Black spent masses of time, more than half an hour, 38 minutes, to reach this position, so perhaps he was surprised, yeah. Board 3, Kokotsa against Kalinchev. We have the French defense d4, d5, knight d2, and c5. Uh, arguably, arguably the best and most reliable uh, line against the Tarash variation. So ed5 and now ed5. A matter of taste. Uh, Queen d5 is also a major, major alternative. In fact, it was played by Ding Liren in the uh, World Championship match against Jan Nepomniachtchi. He obtained a very good position. In fact, he even uh, obtained an advantage, but that blundered badly in time trouble and lost that game. That had nothing to do with the opening. On the other hand, ED5 has been played exclusively by Viktor Korchnoi, most notably in his matches against Anatoly Karpov. And what's notable even perhaps more is that Korchnoi never lost a game to Karpov in these French positions with an IQP. So that tells you something both for Korchnoi's strength and for the uh, reliability and resilience of the position with an IQP on d5 in the French Tarash. Bishop b5, sometimes white starts with knight f3 and then goes bishop b5. But bishop b5, the idea is to, after knight c6, to go queen e2. This is a sort of a modern twist in dealing with the, in dealing with the, um, 
the Tarash variation with ed5. So bishop e7, dc5 here played, knight f6, black sacrificed the pawn for quick development, yeah? Knight b3, defending the pawn, castles, bishop e3, defending the pawn even more, yeah? a6, bishop a4. I can't say I know the theory in this line, I know it exists, but I don't know exa exactly how it should be played. Now knight a5. I don't know why why did not go bishop b3. Maybe he was worried against knight b4, I don't know. But, well... Um, not sure. Okay, bishop a4 was played. Knight a5, long castle, knight c4, bishop d4, bishop e6. So we have a pretty sharp position here. And when... Uh, First and foremost, the most important thing is that white is a pawn up, and that's this pawn on c5, which is for now well protected. What white had to sacrifice to get this pawn is this bishop on a4, which looks out of place and out of the game, looking down this empty diagonal. It's not in immediate danger to be captured by b5 because of that pawn on c5, and yet it's a nuisance to, to have that bishop out of the game. Black has an active knight on c4 and good development. So pretty sharp, both players having spent some time to reach this position. So we will see if Kalinchev continues his winning streak. I can just check. I think he won all bar one. Yes. So he has actually seven and a half out of eight. He drew Stoshevsky <laughs> uh, from Macedonia from the Macedonian veteran team. In fact, that was the weakest, okay, the second weakest player he played, rated 1968, and he was even lost in that position in that game against Stoshevsky, and he beat everybody else for a seven and a half out of eight result, which is obviously great. Let's see if that continues today. Board 4, Curler against Santolini. We had the Taraj variation, but not in the French, just against the Queen's Gambit declined, arising from some English slash red team of orders, e3, c5, and now d4. So we have the Taraj uh, with uh, e3. Now cd5. Uh, Two approaches here, either white goes for cd5 and uh, gives black a choice whether he wants to play with an IQP, IQP after ed5 or against an IQP after knight d5 when later black takes cd4 ed4, that's one option. And the other option is the, uh, let's say here, the waiting move a3, which can be met by a6. Or, let's say, famously, Fischer played knight e4 in his uh, game against Petrosian, game 8 of their match in Buenos Aires in 1971. Another game that Fischer won in that match. I have tried the move knight e4 myself. It has worked pretty nicely uh, for me, as uh, it's a move that, for some reason, white players are surprised by. I don't know why, uh, being played by Fischer and Smyslov, by the way. But whenever I played it, uh, the white players were always surprised by it. In this game, uh, white played c takes d5, and now the common, uh, let's say, consensus or choice of black players is to enter these positions with an IQP after e d5. Fischer played knight d5, for example, preferring to play against an IQP. He had some uh, interesting games in the 60s in this line. Uh, some of them were in his match against Rashevsky in 1961. I, one of these games was even commentated in his My 60 Memorable Games in his book. Modern theory says take with the pawn on d5 and you're fine. Bishop e2 here. An alternative is bishop b5, and I think this is a bit more critical, 
as it poses a bit more problems to black and uh, uh, introducing ideas like bishop takes c6 at some point but bishop e2 was played cd4 again choice for black he can take on d4 and develop bishop c5 as he did or he can go bishop d6 and wait for white to take on c5 and here the difference is that black did lose the tempo but the white knight is not on d4 so cd4 knight d4 bishop c5 castles castles and now knight c6 bc and b3 this is theory standard position both players are fine white has play good development after bishop b2 and he will play against this pawn pair in the center standard procedure something like knight a4 fixing the c5 square maybe rook c1 maybe bishop d4 put something on c5 play on blockade black on the other hand has free development and he should be a bit uh, let's say careful not to allow a bind on you know, the dark squares that may include let's say dropping the bishop on d6 and after something like knight a4 to play c5 and establish hanging pawns but as we know, hanging pawns sometimes need protection. So, long term, I think um, black is the one who needs to be a bit more careful, though for now he's doing fine. The, the match on board two is between Finland and one and England one. And uh, what's notable at first sight is that uh, England's board number one, John Nunn. Uh, he's not playing in this match probably considering that England are the rating favorites in this match so uh, the reasoning must have been that they can win the match even without their board one so on board one we have Heike Westerinen who I have played in 2005 and Anthony Kosten so e4 e5 uh, Kosten can also play the Nidorf, but also e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and knight g7. One of the uh, many, uh, that I'll call them sidelines, but they are not sidelines anymore. Uh, with the emergence of computers, many lines that were considered second or third rate in the, in the Lopez have emerged as quite decent alternatives to the let's call the main lines after a6 or the berlin after knight f6 and one of these is the move knight g7 i have played it myself though i have played it after a6 bishop a4 knight e7 and then intending to fianchetto the bishop on g7 knight g7 short castle and now knight g6 this is a different plan there won't be a fianchetto of the dark sword bishop d4 d4 many ways for white to play and i'm not sure this is the best one as it just seems to give black fast development bishop c5 knight f5 targeting g7 but obviously castle will happen now there is likely a threat of d6 or d5 targeting that knight so bishop e3 bishop e3 knight e3 d6 knight c3 knight c7 uh, Maybe it was worth considering to go c4 and establish a firmer grip over the d5 square. Knight c3, knight c7, and now black will continue with c6 to guard the d5. So, sorry, square. f4 now. Not sure about f4. Since c6 is coming, I would have likely considered removing the bishop from b5 somewhere whether that be c4 or d3 i'm not sure okay f4 played c6 and now white is thinking again a lot of time spent on only 11 moves 38 minutes so we will see so now with no no option to jump to d5 i presume that White's idea will be to create some sort of an attack on the king side, maybe with a quick f5, quick f5, f6 if allowed. However, if black counters that by maybe playing f5 or f6 himself, 
then the, the play will be and will get somewhat slower tempo. And there is also another idea which is perhaps to um, uh, pile up on the d file, let's say queen d2, rook d1 and attack that pawn on d6. That's another option. We will see what Westerinen chooses. Uh, okay, no, we were actually here. Board 2, Chapman against Binham. What we've had was actually knight f3, d5, d4, c5. An interesting um, choice. <laughs> I have used it myself, in fact, in one of the best games I've won uh, ever uh, against uh, Italian Grandmaster at the let me check the year uh, the year was 2018 so I beat Francesco Rambaldi young and pretty strong Italian grandmaster using this move order um, the idea of the move order is one to force a Tarash defense for example if that is on Black's repertoire and second is to kind of put some psych psychological pressure on, on black on, on white because here absolutely the best move for for uh, white is the move c4 and that's what Chapman played and this has been played more than once by Mamejarov. Uh, now e6 would be the Tarash defense but Mamejarov liked this symmetrical defense with knight f6 even though uh, He also played it, let's say, on move 2, like this, d4, d5, c4, c5. And it's not as bad as it may look at first sight. You'll see a lot of games by Mamejarov here with black, and most of the time he was doing okay after the opening. What black did instead of this was dc4, and now we have some transposition to the queen's gambit accepted. For example, like this, dc4, knight f3 and c5. This is the transposition we are getting. It's not the most common move, but it is a possible move. So white played e3, cd4, queen d4. Takes on d4, a6, bishop c4, knight f6. So the end game should be a tad more pleasant for white. He has some uh, development advantage. And black needs to s decide how to develop. Uh, basically, there are two options, and they evolve around the development of the bishop on c8. One is to do what um, black did, which is to play e5, and then just develop the bishop somewhere on this diagonal, h3, c8. And the other one is to go e6, and then develop the bishop on b7, whether after b6 or b5. So two ways to... to um, To develop that bishop. Black decided for e5, knight b3. The knight stays on the queen side even though mm, sometimes to a5, sometimes controlling the c5 square. Even though after something like knight c6, I'm not sure if that knight will ever go to a5. Bishop e7, knight c3, castles rook d1 and now knight bd7. Mm, why did black feel the need to put the knight on d7 to block the diagonal for the bishop and uh, not control the a5 square as the first question that comes to mind because the most natural is definitely knight c6 so i can't really say hey he played knight d7 and now bishop e2 White gets away from possible knight b6 attacks on that bishop and it is very likely that the knight will move again as black needs to develop his light squared bishop. I'm not sure if bishop e2, okay, maybe hard to say. If black manages to, to solve his opening, prob I mean not problems, but finish his development, let's say, 
moving the knight and developing the bishop then uh, I suppose he will be fine as white also has development problems with this bishop on being on c1 this will likely e4 bishop e3 will be played in fact if white manages e4 bishop e3 and something like f3 to solidify the center then all his pieces will be looking down the queen side and the knights are already here and this will be what white uh, is trying to achieve here to use all his pieces to to create some pressure on the queen side we will see how this develops on board three we already had a draw to Omala against Baker so we had a London system and probably okay drawing nine moves okay fair enough nothing more to say and on board four we have Povach against Kivimaki and another London system well the English player playing the London system probably shouldn't be a surprise what I'm <laughs> what I have been surprised over the years since I have played in the the foreign seal English league for more than 10 years and uh, what has consistently made me surprised and also a bit amused was to discover how popular the French defense was uh, amongst the English players I have no explanation why it is so uh, but that always kind of amused me uh, the French defense being so popular among the English players here we see the English player playing the London system that is probably more understandable. So e3, c5, knight d2, knight c6, c3, queen b6, queen b3. c4, queen c2, knight h5, all theory, bishop g5, h6, g5, bishop e2, knight g7. This is the pirouette that knight performs. It goes to g7 so that after bishop g3 it can... Okay, bishop f5 played but... Uh, one of the ideas of this um, pirouette is to still go after the bishop yeah. on g3 but black played bishop f5 and now e4 bishop g6 knight h3 it's becoming much sharper the knight is not blocking the f pawn so e6 castles and i presume that white will start some aggressive play on the king side with f4 now particularly the knight on g7 is a bit misplaced so that's why i'm not sure why whether bishop f5 was the best choice so we will see anyway it looks sort of i guess promising for white as f4 is coming so some attacking chances so let's check if you guys have some comments okay no comments so far and um, uh, okay what I propose now is that okay I'll just switch to the s50 section and leave a game on board and what I will do is to I will go down to the plane hole and I'm just really curious whether Neda really played d4 and we had that Dutch I'll, let me just quickly check the the position if that is still the case yeah it appears that it is the case so uh, I just want to make sure I really find it hard to believe knowing having known Nedef all my life and he never ever opened the chess game except for e4 so we'll take a short break I will pop down to the plane hole and just confirm whether we really had a, a Dutch there see you soon
Can check. All right, see you guys, see you guys. Moshe. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to the live commentary of round eight of the World Senior Team Championship. Uh, as I went downstairs to the playing hall to confirm, and yes, I can confirm that Nedev did play one d4, and uh, in fact, he's completely winning in his game against Canadian player Michael Barron. We will get to this game. Yeah. Before that, uh, let's take a, another overview of the matches. So on board one, Hjartarsson against David, we had this line with knight f3, knight d4 instead of d4 on move 4. So knight c3, queen e5, bishop g2, bishop c5, d3, takes, takes. We basically have a reversed uh, lapin where white fianchetoed the bishop. And we'll need to uh, solve the problem of the development of the other one. Knight bd7, knight c2, strengthening the knight on d4, bishop b6, queen c2, rook e8, b4. That's white's idea to develop the bishop to d b2. Knight d5 and now bishop b2. And now knight f6. Um, if knight b4, it's... Uh, it's likely that something like queen b3 probably would have been played and then followed by some discovered attack from the from the knight maybe there are alternatives i don't know but queen b3 looks logical enough i guess it was possible to play this but david decided not to going for knight f6 and uh, Now let's see what happens after move like knight c6 if that is possible. Um, what did maybe there is this trick knight e3 so counter attack on the queen and if f3 e queen e3 check king h1 now black can take on e2 or black can take on c6 yeah probably on e2. Uh, with a clear pawn up and so this is obviously bad so knight c6 will not happen so white can play something like a3 I suppose just to make sure that that pawn doesn't hang maybe queen b3 so pretty complex middle game position uh, what goes in favor of favor of the Icelandic player is that he has m more time on the clock 18 minutes. Board 2, Godena against Petrusson. In fact, I was in the playing hall when when Godena played rookie 1. <laughs> in fact, we still have uh, this position on the board. So what happened after g6 was knight a3. I said d4 would be played, but you know the commentators jinx. Whenever you say something, the opposite happens. So bishop g7, bishop c4, this is another main line, I mean another line, yeah? Queen e4, bishop e2, knight f6, d4 castles, dc5. This was the uh, the idea I was talking about that white usually employs, taking on c5 and obtaining this 3 against 2 on the queen side. So knight f6, short, ca short castle, knight c5, and rook e1, and black is thinking. Standard position for this line in the Alapin. Uh, it's a it's a type of position that Godena has played countless times and he has a vast experience which of, of course doesn't mean that he won't end up in time trouble anyway though still I found this position somewhat easier to play for white simply because their place the place simpler okay first there is the queen will likely move from e4 even though the bishop doesn't really uh, have any good squares to go to to attack the queen maybe f1 but that's not a big threat then the bishop comes to e3 maybe not comes to b5 putting pressure on the queen side yeah a4 a5 always put some knight on d4 perhaps so it's mostly peace play by white 
and uh, why it's easier because it's easier to to use if not all the majority ABC but even let's say one pawn in the play on the on the queen side whereas for black it's difficult to use any of these pawns maybe the e pawn can advance but that implies let's say weakening of the d5 and d6 squares for example a knight on b5 can easily use the d6 square so it's it's more it's trickier for for black to advance his pawns a long thing by peterson i just it's very early in the game, only 11 moves and players have been spending masses of time. I can understand Godena, it's, it's, that's what it is, uh, but Peterson, well, so bishop g4 play, okay, h3 is logical, bishop e3 also, so we'll see. That's, um, moving on to Arnason Ortega, we left off here after c6 when white went to a4, d6 was played, knight a3, this is an alternative route for the knight, uh, apart from the standard Lopez, let's say, uh, route, from a3, the knight via c4 or c2 can also land on e3. So knight f6, bishop c2, now obviously c4 will be used, short castle. I wonder whether black could have made it a bit more difficult for the knight to come to uh, c4 maybe he was worried more like maybe like f4 so so uh, castle was played knight c4 bishop c7 keeping the bishop and defending e5 knight e3 in in some uh, in some lines knight f5 is possible to play especially if it's supported with something like queen f3 and then after bishop e5, a queen can take on f5. So rook e8 played, intending to take on d4 and attacking the pawn on e4. And now d5. I wonder whether black could have, whether white could have maintained that uh, central tension because generally in the Lopez it, it is in white's favor. Very generally, yeah. So maybe it's something like queen f3 if that was possible. But maybe it's problematic to defend the pawn like this so maybe there wasn't really a choice so why it goes d5 an alternative is to take actually d e d e and play queen f3 and then go knight f5 even though i suspect that we we actually saw something similar if you remember when we were looking at the s65 games it was the game uh, when uh, the Macedonian team was playing, I think they were playing, uh, I can't remember who they are, but it was the game by Kralevsky. And we had this, uh, let's say, just let's make a move h6, knight f5, bishop f5, queen f5. We had exactly the same structure and exactly the same material, knight and bishop against two bishops. And it, it, for a very long time, this was okay for black. In the end, uh, black was outplayed and lost. But generally, these are holdable positions, even though they are not, I mean, that, well, great to play with black, because black needs a lot of patience to um, to uh, make basically a draw. So perhaps g6 was a, is a better move to stop knight f5. Yeah. Though then again, okay, the knight moves, maybe bishop g5 helps. I guess this was an alternative. White went d5, bishop b6, yeah, now with no need to protect the pawns, the bishop is more active on this diagonal, h3, not strictly necessary, but okay, a5, a3, so, not quite clear what plans are here. So bishop d7, rook e1, bishop c5, b3, cd, <coughs> ed now. I guess natural is to take with a piece, but I guess something like this is quite okay for black. 
So taking with the pawn and now b5 and bishop b2. Very complex position. Uh, this structure can arise from many openings, starting from the Nidorf, the Sveshnikov, sometimes the Philidor. Here we have it from the Lopez. It's a complex structure because a lot depends on how the remaining pieces are placed. Here, black has a pretty active dark squared bishop. Not it's not on e7, for example, in many lines in the neither for the Sveshnikov, and he has he's quite active on the queen side, which uh, sort of makes it more difficult for white to advance there. Because if you look at the structure, it's four against three. On the other hand, black is also very slow and not really easy for him to activate his own 4 against 3 on the king side. So both pros and cons for, for both players and uh, but generally speaking looks looks good for, for, for black. Also slight advantage on the clock. And board 4, uh, we had a surprising development here. Actually, after f3, bishop e7 was played, king b1, queen c7, h4, and a long castle. And uh, I may have seen this in the past, I doubt it, to see black actually castle long in the classical Sicilian in this variation. In many lines, when there is bishop f6, g f6, black does castle long. But in this variation with f3, it's rare that I had seen it. So h5, d5 now. So if this works, and well, just black maybe just equalizes without problems. It, that's why I'm not so sure about h5. Yes, probably against after long castle. Uh, black threatens d5, so white possibly had to take some measures. For example, maybe queen e1, and if d5, then e5 is possible. So h5 looks a bit careless because d5. Now bishop d3 was played, d takes f4, f takes e4, h6, bishop h4, bishop d6. Black seems to be doing quite alright, he has the better structure, this is an isolated pawn. The king really doesn't have problems, so well, quite a, a fast and, and effective way that black solves his opening problems if he had any yeah at least not going for the mainstream theory in fact i will check i will check this because it's interesting to see uh, in the classical sicilian if black can play like this actually yeah so um so let me check my notes so f3 was played yeah so black played bishop e7 king b1 was played i will just check how this goes yeah queen c7 one of the possible moves the other ones were b5 or short castle so queen c7 now h4 h4 and here long castle so we, I'm talking about this position, yeah. In long cast. So Kojul, the, the guru <laughs> guru of the variation, has played long short castle. H6 has been played, rook d8 has been played, but and long castle in fact being played relatively few times, but played by engines for one. And let me see if it is, yeah, in correspondence chess. And this is already, if something is played in correspondence chess and the results are, are good or acceptable, that's usually a sign that the line is, 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 is a good one. And since these players have a lot of time and uh, normally very strong hardware to check their lines on, it's usually a sign of quality, and uh, we mentioned uh, Nikolaos and Tirlis earlier in the in, before the break, and that is one of the reasons why he is able to uh, note these trends in the opening, like suggesting moves like a3 or h3 against the 
can variation and working well with with engines is um, probably he has access to, to very strong hardware and that's the, those are the reasons that make him a very good uh, opening analyst and a good correspondence player after long castle three moves have been played knight e2 bishop c4 and queen e3 in fact the engine game did go queen e3 i proposed queen e1 but it's the same idea after d5 to go e5 h5 is a new move and it appears that belia was already surprised here by this rare plan of long castle so after the position we get here in the on the board it's actually quite a pleasant position for the icelandic team you could say that uh, the trend in this game is in black's favor so to sum up the situation in the match on board one okay a3 was played queen h5 e4 we have a complex middle game from the english things are more or less balanced board two still bishop e3 played okay still early stages both players spending masses of time time trouble is looming already for they spend one hour only on 12 moves so um, objectively position is fine for both uh, time travel and may decide this board three black is doing generally fine here he played b queen b6 and b4 was played now whether to take on b4 or take on e3 first is the question but generally black is doing fine okay here as well so in a way balances out the uh, so the trend being here let's say in black's favor and the same happening on board four so the match is sort of balanced when it comes to uh, trends and initiative for certain boards let's see if the americans have made progress against the finish okay in the catalan here uh, we had a we had a very early deviation from theory black chose the line with c5 and after knight c6 queen a4 bishop d7 queen c4 instead of the modern move b5 he chose simplifications on d4 continued with bishop c6 we just landed him in an inferior position for very little compensation thanks to that weak pawn on c6 so okay now white just continued normal development and playing against that weakness on c6 very pleasant situation for kaidanov so and now even he won a pawn for nothing so this this is already winning for white here we had well very big changes in fact uh, Elvis decided to keep the light squared bishop inside the pawn chain, so we have a French structure. Literally, it's easy to to guess that this arose from the French defense and not from the modern. The queen on a4 is notable as it stops possible a4 by white and keeps the uh, the an eye on the c2 pawn. In a way, it is a bit out of the action happening on the king side and uh, black is currently playing on the king side intending to uh, weaken the position of white's king knight f1 played covering g3 but this just uh, normally this this is a good version of the french for for black just exchanging everywhere on g3 on f4 opening the files against the king should give him really really good play so this is also pretty good for the americans novikov against barandiran diaran barandiran gabriel from the polish defense uh, obviously black, black did not play too well here and did not play anything in the center and uh, well g5 really looks completely out of place bishop queen g3 played 
Okay, this again looks close to winning for white. And on board four. Okay, we had this English attack where things got even less interesting because white decided to castle short. And uh, this is already an admission of lack of ambition. So black just normally in this when when uh, white plays without an ambition like f3 a3 in the Sicilian, black usually just finishes development, pushes d5, and is doing all white all right. In fact, uh, I think here, uh, uh, apart from just let's say the most natural plan, which is to push through d5, he could have also employed uh, Fisher's plan. Yeah, king h8, and then rook g8, g5, rook g6. Yeah, maybe g4 later on. The queen can move. The rooks can double g5 g4 maybe h5 and so on playing for an attack on the king side fisher employed this in a few of his games uh, the first time was against uh, garcia in the havana olympiad the second one was against uh, with white against ulf anderson in an exhibition game uh, after the Ziegen olympiad in 1970 and i think he employed it in in some of his simultaneous exhibitions or some unofficial games because I sort of remember seeing another game when he employed this plan it seemed like very natural to go for d5 yeah d5 and exchange everything in the center but he went for for this plan uh, Yermolinsky decided to go for the d5 plan which he did equalizing without problems even taking over the initiative b2 is hanging and now also c2 is hanging yeah c3 is not possible because the knight is hanging so bishop d3 queen h5 played uh, the question is uh, well just how white will deal with these issues here probably rook b1 to defend the pawn but then ideas maybe like bishop e5 knight f4 knight h4 can appear so again this looks like a very very good position for knight d4 played okay good position for for black so i wouldn't be surprised if it, uh, usa wins by 4-0 here uh, montenegro against england things have happened we left off after c5 queen c2 was played attacking h7 and now bishop b7 so um, sacrificing that pawn on h7 dc5 was played after the immediate let's say bishop h7 king h8 there is a threat of g6 and if the bishop goes back i suppose knight c6 or cd4 maybe uh, is what black would play the problem is that knight d4 is not possible because of queen g2 and if something like ed4 then knight c6 or something yeah looks looks good at least not very it's not black doesn't really have problems yeah so white took on c5 first and after knight a6 we see what i was saying uh the intrigue for me in this game being how adams would approach and how well, the, 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 the prospect of a let's say possible simplification by white and a draw uh, and how he will seek for chances in a in a let's say somewhat simplified or symmetrical position and here we see him doing it knight a6 so c6 was played knight b4 multiple attack queen bishop and the pawn bishop h7 check king h8 queen e4 bishop c6 Queen d5, bishop d5, bishop b1, no other square. Bishop takes f3, gf, and bishop f6. This was the position I saw in the playing hall. And uh, it's kind of awkward for white to defend. Bishop b4 seems to be the only move. Bishop b2, white regains the pawn. Black regains the pawn, sorry. Rook b1, bishop c3 check, king f1, rook a d8. And rook b3, bishop d2. So, again, how it's very, very, I think, instructive how Adams managed to create some imbalance in the, in the position. So, um, what we have is that white has the pair of bishops, 
even though it has to be said that, that they are not very effective right now because they're looking down an empty diagonal and they're not very stable in fact f5 for for example targets the light squared bishop and again the only square would be b1 and it won't be particularly active there as well and the second aspect uh, that the four pawns that white has on the king side they are they are doubled so it's not very likely that white will create a passed pawn there on the other hand black has a mobile pawn majority yeah, which can advance there is also an attack on a2 and uh, black's activity is for now more efficient I would say white still needs to get the other rook into the game and, uh, and in the meantime also needs to think what to do with the pawn on a2 so interesting that Adams managed to create this imbalance instead of just playing for sh like uh, sheer and simple equality. So, board two M's against Pajkovic standard Italian slash Gioco Piano situation where Black had played d5. Pretty solid position for Black though. I thought perhaps White could somehow put more pressure with this early knight bd to knight e4 instead okay some normal development by both okay the inclusion of a4 a5 allows for example uh, for moves like queen b3 without fearing knight a5 but if queen b3 then knight b6 and then the bishop is under attack maybe it will go to b5 put pressure in the center that's one idea yeah So let's see what Ems comes up with. Again, it's kind of worrying that so much time has been spent by. And this appears to be the case in most of the matches. You know, players spending a lot of time in the in the opening and in the early middle middle game. So only 16 moves and already only 27 minutes left for White and 34 for Black. So Miljanic against Fleer. Okay, we had this position after h6 white played d3 as expected rook e8 bishop e3 bishop f8 standard regrouping for black in the lopez rook e8 bishop f8 and now generally the plan is to push d5 normally that's the kind of a, the dynamics of the lopez if white does not uh, play d4 and play in the center black will try to do the same by playing d5 if possible yeah so knight bd2 played knight a5 gaining a tempo bishop c2 and now c5 so it's grabbing some space yeah, in the center before pushing d5 I guess d5 immediately was also possible yeah, but nothing wrong with c5 to, to make d4 a bit less desirable as then there will be massive exchanges there so which actually did happen so a b a b d4 was played and now massive exchanges on d4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, all exchanges on e4, and now queen b5, and knight c6 played. So this can easily, uh, well, turn out to be some massive simplica simplification. The point, I guess, is if dc5 rook b4, attacking b2, yeah, and if something like queen e2, maybe rook b8, and, uh, well, probably there is enough compensation here for for black so after knight c6 uh, white is thinking yeah. here at least white has a solid advantage on the clock if these are correct 48 minutes left and only 14 for for black so Let's see, even though the position can quickly be simplified and players can agree to a draw. And on board 4, Arkel against Nikac. We had this very curious Dutch. A5 was played, rook b1. This was the plan I indicated 
of b3 bishop b2 a4 now trying to dissuade white from playing b3 and white switched to the alternative way of exchanging the bishop by playing bishop d2 bishop c3 queen a6 is another attempt to stop bishop c3 by attacking the pawn on c4 bishop f1 defends it bishop e6 continues the attack but now knight g5 attacking the bishop the bishop drops back and now finally uh, White achieves the aim, but now somewhat surprisingly, after bishop c3, he took with a pawn. I would have expected queen c3 to be more or less automatic. I don't see anything wrong with it, especially with Keith liking his structures and pawns and so on. So bc3 is a definitely a more dynamic recapture, opening the b file, but just creating these double pawns did not really s seem necessary to me, especially as the advantage of having the open B file I'm not sure it over outweighs the problems of the double pawns Rook A7 played, covering the pawn on B7, E4 Knight G7, E5 Knight F5 sorry, Bishop F5, Bishop D3, D5 now Rook B4, defending that pawn here yeah h6, knight f3, takes on d3, takes on c4 and the trick is that rook c4, rook f3 wins a piece for black so queen e4, c5 and rook b2 so very sharp, very sharp uh, black won a pawn but it's not very relevant for now as it's a doubled one on the c file on the other hand the queen got involved with the last move in the defense of the king side but the rook is out of the game on a7 so I would say that there is certain compensation here for white and uh, time is more or less equal 36 for white 32 for black so compensation for the pawn yeah so the match generally still doesn't give any advantage to anybody unclear on Nikcevic Adams, M. Spikovic still early middle game, Miljanic Fleer can quickly uh, peter out to a draw, and here compensation for white, but objectively unclear. So, an un unclear match. Let's see the match between Canada and um, North Macedonia Alkaloid. We have a position here where I was kind of of the impression that white is definitely playing for a draw here and he did manage to exchange quite a lot of pieces and pawns and simplify the position in the process he weakened his king somewhat still I expect that the position is more or less balanced but if black is to uh, rook is seven played okay if black is to to keep any winning chances being the higher rated player he I think must keep the queens on the board and try somehow to get to the king board 2 oh this is still ongoing and yes like as I said I can confirm that Nedev did play d4 on move 1 I'm still about to ask him what inspired him to do so one way or another the, the debut was a spectacular one because very soon he won a piece on move 20 which was the uh, position I saw in the playing hole he was a clear piece up I was actually expecting black to resign but and because it's only for a pawn but just black decided to continue and play with all the eight pawns on the board quite a curious position so just moving forward B takes E5, okay, this is really, really should finish any moment now. Because knight is coming to B3, and then the king is coming to B4, D4, it's really game over. So Nedef will win this game. Uh, Findlay against Tarnoyevsky, from that knight of slash dragon mix, we do have a position that resembles more of a knight of with that bishop on e7 and uh, in the meantime well white managed to just get a pawn on h6 
something that Alpha Zero recently has taught us that it's a good thing to have. Though, speaking from Knight of Experience, the more bigger issue for Black here is the passivity of the bishop. Ideally, he would like to play f6 yeah, to undermine this uh, or exchange this pawn, which is preventing the bishop from being activated. So, I don't know if knight c. Okay, the knight was hanging, so that's why knight c5. Yeah. So f6 would be something that I would be, um, or even f5, and then just shutting down the king side. So that would be something I would be eager to play with black, even though here f4 is a typical move that needs to be considered, attacking the e5 pawn. Yeah. And then after taking on f4, both with a bishop, or probably with a bishop, and then the knight can come to d4, it, it makes it a bit more problematic to play f6, because it weakens the e6 square, so... Um, so knight c3 was played, and f4 was not played. So again, now I expect something like f6 or f5, because that is the only way for for black to to activate that bishop on e7, otherwise he doesn't really have anything going on the on the queen side. So it's the, the only way to do so. But some pressure for white, I think, here. Board 4, we have Kutir of Doherty, and uh, that strange position. Now we have an endgame where white kept the pair of bishops definitely an advantage just how big an advantage if it's enough to win or not we will see but it's definitely a very 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 pleasant position for white yeah so it's been in particular that the dark squared bishop is very strong as all these pawns on light squares are only helping that light dark squared bishop to roam around at the same time limiting the, their own bishop yeah so excellent winning chances here for white so as it stands north macedonia will win the match and perhaps that is uh, um, that is uh well most important so before switching to the s65 section let's see if they have some comments uh, yeah, this place, as John Hammer asked, is in North Macedonia on the Lake Ohrid. It's not actually in Ohrid because the town of Ohrid is some, I think, 20 kilometers away. The closer town is actually Struga, which is a kind of a favorite place of mine because that's the, the place where uh, the Ohrid Lake actually uh, flows out into the the river called dream actually it's dream but it's, the sound is something like dream <laughs> in uh, in english it doesn't really have a meaning it's just a name dream so uh, in fact that happens uh, in more or less in the center of the of the town of struga and it's my favorite place because you can actually stand on the bridge on the very top where that happens so you have this whole big lake just going into forming into a river and there's a very huge stream from the lake going into this river dream and you stand on top of the bridge where this happens so it's a fascinating place for me i always try to go there there's a very big energy you can feel it the whole lake forming into a into a river in fact on the other side of the lake there, uh, it's uh, in a place called uh, Sveti Naum, Saint Naum. Uh, it is where the, the river Dream actually originates. Is the, is the spring of the river, and that river flows throughout the lake underneath is, as a current, and flows out here in this place in Struga. So it's a very fascinating place. I really, it's one of my favorite places in in Macedonia, and uh, well, I always wholeheartedly recommend it to people because I haven't in fact seen any other place in the world and I've been to, to quite a few places in this world uh, but I've never seen this place like a, that big uh, lake actually flowing into a, a river and you can actually stand on top of that and you can see down there how the river how the, the water is flowing in a very strong uh, stream 
So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a very nice place, Struga. But like I said, Struga is some five, seven, I don't know, kilometers away, because the hotel actually it's uh, uh, on an isolated place uh, outside of the town, and on obviously on the uh, on the lake. So, okay, yeah, you're welcome for this, for the for the background and for the story. Yeah. Okay, so let me move on to the S sixty five. See what happened there. So on board one, we have. Uh, okay, we had some development that I noted as possible, and that was after Queen D eight. Black sacrificing the central pawn, but in somewhat different way, not by ed5 and knight b6, but knight b6 immediately. d6, bishop e6, this is probably superior as it gets the bishop developed with tempo, queen a3, and now a5. So, black's compensation consists of firm control over the d5 square and pressure, pressure on d4 and the bishop pair. So, queen c5, bishop d5. Rook fd1, rook e8, b3, rook e6, rook ac1, queen e8. Both players a bit over 20 minutes for 21 moves. Uh, I would say black still has the okay, knight c4 played, still has the compensation. Though I doubt he has winning chances. The compensation is probably enough for equality, but probably not for winning. So knight c4 intending to initiate some exchanges. So now black needs to do something, yeah, maybe bishop f8, maybe, I don't know, I don't know if taking on c4 is an option, maybe rook c8, something to think about definitely here. So board 2, maester against mesa. We had this position after a5, and here why decided to continue with play on the queen side so he went knight a2 castles rook fb1 and pushing b4 a natural plan uh, in, in the sense that it uh, uh, uses the that pawn on a5 to open the b file on the other hand we see the benefit of that knight on b on uh, b6 that it can land on the weakened c4 square so maybe there was some idea that knight d2 covering c4 and then playing b4 was perhaps more precise but okay b4 knight c4 queen c3 takes on b4 and knight d6 normally the knight the d6 square is the perfect square for the knight in the Karlsbad structure from where it just controls everything it needs to control all these light squares which are very important most importantly this position is defending the pawn on b7 so knight c3, rook fc8, a5, knight finally comes back to f6. <coughs> Maybe it made sense to go to g7 and then go bishop f5. And after the exchange to recapture with the knight from g7, not to move the knight from d6. But okay, knight f6. The idea likely was to go to d7 and cover the dark squares. Knight a4, rook c7. I don't know why not knight d7. Maybe it just made sense to, to cover it with the knight, but uh, okay. Uh, so rook c7, rook c1, knight e8. Okay, I'm uh, not sure what the knight is doing there. Just covering the one on d6, but quite passive. Okay, knight b6, rook b8, knight e5, knight c8. Okay, just retreating, yeah. Queen b2, queen d6, but it's very solid. Yeah, I mean, black is retreating, but really no weaknesses b7 is well defended and just everything nothing really to attack so knight a4 f6 knight f3 rook a so the the, the white pieces were repulsed and black keeps a solid position on the board but not on the clock 14 moves only nine minutes for black and 45 for white so the problems here that black may have are more from the clock situation and a bit less so on the board though obviously white has pressure yeah some knight c5 b7 maybe 
a bit tender so definitely pressure for white here board three whoa we had massive changes here we saw the position after bishop e6 i think and i mentioned okay that there was compensation for black knight f3 was played knight e4 knight e5 knight e5 bishop e5 so white managed to exchange the active knight on c4 now rook c8 black now wants to regain the pawn bishop d4 doesn't allow it but now b5 only move cb6 and now rook c4 so another pawn sacrifice to activate the rook in fact the problem is that the bishop is sort of trapped here so mm, and now i think just this i mean i don't know if white had something better but just panicking and playing queen c4 doesn't look too too good honestly i don't know what should have been played because the bishop is hanging and probably maybe white should seek some tactical like some i don't know f3 maybe and then where does the knight go mm. obviously a mess but queen c4 just don't don't buy this dc4 knight a5 i mean the idea is to to, to support the the, the past pawn yeah but again it's only a rook for a queen so yeah doesn't look very a very sound check king b1 c3 knight c6 queen d5 threatening queen a2 obviously b3 queen d6 now threatening queen a3 king a1 bishop d7 now pinning the knight bishop c3 and queen c5 so the knight is hanging and when the knight moves bishop a4 will happen and the bishop on c3 is hanging so it looks kind of resignable for white well Kalinchev, eight out of eight out eight and a half out of nine definitely the star player in the german team Köhler against santolini slow developments black decided not to play dynamically or at least not a lot and just after white consolidated queen h4 okay well knight a4 exchanging of the dark squared bishops is in white's favor because it's a one piece less that controls these important squares in the center bishop a6 rook okay, fd1 okay queen a4 now obviously white has nothing to do on the king side it's all about the king the queen side queen b7 rook c1 queen b6 queen a3 always this um square and now maybe black had the last chance to play c5 because after the next move knight d3 that's no longer possible so c5 would have solved the problem of the of the backward pawn but maybe there are issues with knight a4 so maybe not so great okay bishop b5 played knight d3 and now establishing control over the c5 square unless black takes on d3 and in fact that may as well be his best choice because it that it, i mean gets rid of the somewhat uh, passive or limited bishop light squared bishop and destroys a piece that controls the dark squares which can then be guarded by a knight so it makes sense to take on d3 now although probably it's not the only option black has so thanks to the the uh, the win by Kalinchev, Germany will likely win another match. And let's check the English. So we left off. Okay, uh, after c6, White played bishop e2, and this was made by queen b6, and already it's kind of problematic. So queen d2, queen d3 played. Okay, and now d5. I'm not sure if it was possible to take on b2. 
I mean, the queen d is not getting trapped, that's for sure. But whether white can do something with the temporary initiative, not. I mean, f5 is meant by knight e5 with tempo, so no time for f6. Mm, I don't know. If knight c4, then queen a6. Uh, maybe this was what black wanted to avoid. Yeah, maybe. So d5 was played. Knight d1. Pretty ugly, but it does defend the pawn on b2. D takes e4, queen e4, bishop f5, queen c4, bishop e6, queen e4, rook d8, c3, rook d2, rook f2, knight f5. Okay, obviously, bishop f1. It's black took over the initiative in this open position. Now it's just a matter of whether this can be capitalized on. Okay, the rook on d2 is hanging, so either rook take on f2 or rook d8. And after rook f2, black white must take with a king because the knight must stay on d1 to defend the pawn on b2 and then there is this unpleasant pin even though I'm not sure if it can be used immediately maybe just simply rook d8 and then rook d2 again looks pretty bad for white board 2 we had this end game that we were looking at and uh, we were looking at here yeah knight b6 was played expected to allow for the development of the bishop, bishop f3 I was somehow more expecting a move like e4 and then f3, bishop e3 bishop f3 okay, temporarily stops the development but rook b8 and now the bishop will be developed, so knight d2 covering c4 bishop b f5, f5, I'm not sure if bishop f like forcing white to play e4 was strictly necessary because but okay bishop e6 Okay, black should be fine now. I don't think that this bishop f3 knight d2 was the best way to to play. Knight f1 now. Okay, maybe there is an idea to control the d5 square, but black is definitely doing fine here. Bishop b4, knight e2, <coughs> rook d8, rook d8, takes, takes b3, bishop c5, bishop b2, targeting e5, knight g4. Attacking f2, forcing a capture, knight g3, moving away, and f6, and rook c1. Well, black even won the pair of bishops, so uh, definitely is doing great. So perhaps chance for, for the Finnish player to put pressure on white and... Uh, perhaps even wrestle some of the initiative in the match even though his advantage is not even close to the I would say almost winning advantage Kosten has on board 1 so board 3 was drawn and on board 4 okay we had this London system where after bishop e7 black white played f4 queen d8 queen a4 f5 now Okay, just shutting everything down on the king side. Ed5, Ed5. Now at least the e file is open, but that will be shut by some piece probably landing on e5. In fact, it's not that simple right now because knight f3 runs into g4, and um, uh, both black's knights are pretty far from the e4 square. B3 played, undermining the center. Cba, queen b3. Okay. The idea is probably just to go c4 and open the center somehow, trying to get to the exposed king, but not simple either. Queen d7, defending b7, rook b1, now g4. Uh, I'm not sure if this was necessary because the knight was anyway not doing so great on h3, and now just forces the knight to go where it wants to go to the d3 square and then e5. So. Rook b8 now, defending the pawn on b7, knight d3, and the knight is coming to e5, something that wasn't easy a few moves ago. Castles, rook e1, knight h5. So black also finds a way to get to e4. Knight f1, knight f6, bishop h4, knight e4. Bishop e7, knight e7. Okay, this was a good exchange for white. 
because he got rid of his very limited bishop thanks to these pawns and exchanged it for black's good bishop the difference is that that knight on e5 now cannot be touched by black's bishop whereas that knight on e4 can be exchanged by a bishop so we we can easily see a scenario of a good knight bad bishop here queen d6 bishop d3 king h7 g3 I'm not sure about g3 but okay g3 and king g7 okay black maybe doesn't have an idea what to do uh, and uh, as i explained one of the main advantages of a good bishop is that it can be exchanged for a knight whereas the bad bishop cannot be exchanged for a knight so it looks pretty good for for white uh, at least from a strategical point of view so as it is england should also most likely win their match so uh, uh, leading okay just checking the comments leading who's leading well in the s65 italy is uh, sorry germany lasker is leading the hundred percent score having beaten england in the direct match who are in second place whereas in this s50 section Italy is leading ahead of USA and Iceland and we have Iceland playing Italy on board one so I'll have another short break now uh, just move I'll move to the s50 section and uh, set up the position from board Hjartarsson against David I have a quick quick break now and then uh, as time travel approaches we will be back with all the action I'll be back soon.
Right. Hello and welcome back to the live commentary of round eight of the World Senior Team Championship. So we are approaching time control now and uh, we are going to see what's going on in the matches, especially as expectedly both players uh, run out of time. The position we had here in the game, Hjartarsson David, rookie knight g4 was played after e4, and this already indicates that black set the course for uh, for complications. I, I guess there was nothing wrong by, uh, with uh, retreating the knight, but David went for complications after h4, and now knight d e3. So after exchange on e3 and take on f1 what we have actually is that white has uh, two pieces for a rook and a pawn on first sight i would say that this should be okay for white now there are some issues here with the uh, the attack on the on the knights but king h2 solves the problem with a pin rook d8 and the queen c4 solves the problem of the other pin so bishop c7 threatening Queen h4, knight f4, queen h6. Oh, it's a bit weird because I have the impression that, well, it should be white who should be consolidating and, and playing on with the material advantage. So, somewhat risky decision by David, I would say. Knight b3, bishop e6, queen c3, bishop g4. So, black is marking time, meaning that there is not a clear plan in sight for him. King g1, g5 was never really a threat because there is a mate, but uh, getting maybe out of this h2 b8 diagonal. Bishop e5, queen c2, queen d6, exchange on e5, knight c5, and rook e7. So, mm, definitely king h2, okay, so definitely it's white who is playing for a win here. I'm not sure why David went for this, he also has very little time, 40 seconds for 10 moves. So, I mean, his position is solid, no real weaknesses. Mm, solid, also safe squares for his pieces, so... But I think long-term white's chances are definitely to be preferred. Board 2, <coughs> so we have uh, an endgame, uh, where white obviously started pushing on the queen side, and you can see now what I had in mind when I spoke earlier that those positions are easier for white because, as you can see, white used the a-pawn to advance, exchange it, and so on. Whereas black still hasn't moved his own majority. But in view that this is an endgame, and black is already with the king nearby on, the, on c6, and 96 now played. Now this I expect to be a, a draw, so white can't really do much on the queen side because the king easily deals with any passed one that perhaps appears and on the other hand black hasn't even started pushing so this should be a draw board 3 already finished in a draw so we left off when b4 was played and after a b a b take on a1 take on a1 take on e3 rook e3 actually this this is interesting white offered the draw and it was accepted so i mean you know, in, in team matches, offering and accepting a draw uh, very often depends on uh, the situation in the match. So, I don't know in which situation exactly Ortega accepted, because maybe he saw that Godena will also likely draw, you, but David is probably on the back foot against Hjartarsson and on board 4. Okay, we had, wow, this is a massive transformation, 3 pieces against 2 rooks but white's king being weakened so this looks this looks very very good for black so again i don't know whether exchanging uh, i mean whether accepting a draw in a position that, that which was still playable for for black and uh, where i think he could have played on without any significant risk was good because here likely black will win and that leaves only uh, well uh, how can they they I mean, equalize the the score in the match 
as Hjartason is the one pressing against David. So, as things are, the Icelandic team seems set on winning this match. So, uh, and if they do, they will overtake Italy as leaders. So, so this is already well. Okay, again, I think perhaps that draw for should have been at least postponed. So as things stand, it appears that uh, Iceland will win the match. Uh, the Americans already lead by one, and as we said, they had a winning position on all boards, more or less. So f6, knight b6 played, rook h4, takes, takes, rook d5, clear pawn up, so just a matter of technique for more pawns. Okay, so this was just really... Uh, Elvest also won, he actually delivered mate, as you can see. <coughs> um, so, uh, I also saw him in the lobby, so it's... Uh, he told me he won, so 2-0. Novikov also won. Uh, I also saw him in the lobby, point being that bishop f6, 97, yeah. And uh, white remains a material up, so that's 3-0. And Yermolinsky still playing, but having a material advantage that should be 4 0. England against Montenegro. Uh, we saw the position after. Um, let's see. Uh, bishop b4, yeah? Bishop b2, rook b1, checking f1, rook d8. This was the position we were looking at. Rook b3 was played, bishop d2, king e2 now. And latching onto that bishop and sacrificing the pawn on a2. Rook d3 takes on d3, bishop b4, bishop b5, bishop c3, pawn up for, for, for black. Bishop b1, but now white at least forced opposite colored bishops. And soon enough, Four, bishop f6, h4, h5. The rooks were exchanged, so uh, white sacrificed a second pawn in order to uh, eliminate the rooks and now hoping that he can hold the blockade. But this, I don't think this is tenable. Okay, king d3, king e7, okay, black to play because there are still a lot of pawns on the, on the king side and white can't just rely on the blockade because black will uh, try to uh, mix it up by trying to push through let's say with b5 and attack on the pawns on the king side so this should be i think winning for black so again nice performance by adams in a sense that he as i mentioned at the beginning the uh, he managed to create enough imbalance in the position in order to outplay a pretty strong opponent bishop f2 yeah the problem is that okay something like e4 and bishop g3 like will either lose another pawn for white or will make the king defend the the uh, the pawn and then perhaps white black can start pushing his own pawns of course bishop e8 needs to be taken into consideration but still it's not a pleasant thing to to do perhaps it's just better to keep the pawn on e3 and the king on d3 and what black now wants to do is that he wants to get the king to c5 and push on b5 but uh, bearing in mind this idea of bishop e8 with counter attack so on board two Ems and Pajkovic somehow white won a pawn so uh, queen b3 was played in that position, as we mentioned, rook d8, knight g3, I think just uh, um, taking on b7 loses the queen, something like this, standard trap, knight g3, rook bishop f6, bishop b5, rook e6, some maneuvering, knight b6, bishop e3, and now takes on b6, bishop c4, 
and take on b6 okay probably black just blundered this because nothing of this was forced and uh, black could have avoided it but okay now bishop pair i don't think should be enough compensation here queen e3 because white is extremely solid knight g3 h4 now knight g5 knight e4 also the knights now have pretty good solid squares from where they cannot be chased away okay white to move three minutes for white and one and a half for black but this should be winning as i don't see compensation for 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 black board three this should have been something that okay we had this position after queen b5 knight c6 okay actually ah okay so not dc5 crook before as i mentioned but queen d3 was played now d5 take on a8 take on c5 and okay pawn up so perhaps i'm not sure if this all this was forced let's say here after queen d3 maybe it was better to take on a1 first but uh Okay, it was d5, takes, takes, dc5, knight b4, queen c3, rook c4, knight c2 now, knight e5, take on e3, rook c5, so black regained the pawn, but white took on f7. Still, I get the impression that perhaps this was... Okay, pawn up. But not that simple to make progress. Queen e4, not sure about this. Rook f4, queen e6, rook f1, bishop d6, knight f4, bishop f4, queen f4, rook c2. So, white remains a pawn up, but there is certain counterplay in view of the activity. Yeah? Maybe queen g6. Even, uh, I mean, e3 is also under, under guard. Yeah? So, maybe ideas like queen e4 and a rook endgame are also ideas here so um, difficult to make progress for for white here i think and on board for rkl and nikach drew we had this position where where were we so black i think yeah this was the position where black played a3 rook d2 b5 so for the time being black is ignoring white's at least visual initiative on the king side just advances the the pawns so knight h4 king h7 rook e d1 queen e6 bring the king queen back rook d8 and okay in this position white offered the draw which was accepted probably a timely offer because it appears that uh, black is very fast here and white doesn't have anything obvious at least for now on the king side so a good probably good offer for white which will likely provide it that uh, i mean not even provide it but probably will, will win that will win the match for england as well adams and ems both having winning positions so this enables that half point that they will need two and a half irrelevant of what Fleer does against Smiljanic let's check the uh, uh, match between Canada and North Macedonia Alkaloid we've had some developments the, the Knights were exchanged White's King became even more weak uh, and again crucial here for for Black if he is to continue playing for a win is to keep the queens on the board so check black is actually white is thinking curious that kirill has almost one hour left on the clock after the time control so he has played this game very fast so check okay king g1 played okay this normally i mean these positions win queen and rooks uh, only the number one uh, factor, like always, without accept exception, is the king safety. 
And I've noticed that some positions that may even be objectively winning for the side with a weaker king, for example, some extra material or so on, can be lost because of that weaker king. The result being, the, I mean, the point being that a king, a queen and rook can very easily master uh, uh, a devastating and uh, winning attack. One of the best examples, in fact, one that I uh, analyzed in my newsletter on Substack, I think it was called Difficult Positions, the name of the newsletter, and uh, I attached a free-to-download analysis of uh, the famous game Schlechter uh, Lasker from their World Championship match, where the starting position was looked like a dead draw, with uh, seven pawns each, only rook and queen on the board. And then it, it's a fascinating game where you see Lasker actually be ambitious in that dead drawn position, uh, managing to outplay Schlechter and obtain objectively winning position. However, thank, uh, thanks to the, his weak king, uh, White always had some counterplay. And eventually it was Lasker who succumbed and lost the game. It was that famous game that he lost and then he was forced to, to uh, win the last game of the match to draw the match. Yeah. So here I would say that black's winning chances are quite big. The threat is now queen d1. Check. And uh, again, th these positions with the weak, weaker king are such a torture to, to play and defend. So I, I would expect that black will win here. So net f1 as expected. Yeah. And uh, we saw this position after knight b3, king d6, king d4, f4, knight c5, g h5, knight a6, the knight just comes back to collect that pawn on d5, yeah? h4, knight b4, g4, e4, the final trick, yeah? g3 with some promotion ideas, but just e4 and white resigned, black resigned, so that was clear. Findlay against Anoski, whoa, we have definitely had a lot happening here. King f4, so this should be a draw, yeah, because uh, black will take both pawns, he will not risk losing, but then again he won't be able to do much, because bishop d6, king e4, bishop b7, and uh, it will be a draw. So, okay, and on the last board, <coughs> again some mess, but at first sight it looks like a draw 2. So white didn't make most of that favorable endgame with the pair of bishops. So this I expect this to end with a 3-1 victory for for the Macedonian team. Okay, a, a, an expected win. Okay, they were huge favorites in this match. It keeps them in contention. Yeah, with a with a win in last round, perhaps they can finish as high as possible. Obviously, yeah. Uh, let's take a quick look at the S65 section. Okay, let's go back to the board one, and it, we had actually a draw here. I mentioned that, okay, black had, um, where were we just, I don't know, he, the queen e8, yeah? Knight c4 was played, yeah, this was the position. Black heads, compensation for sure. Just the question was, okay, I mean, uh, like I said, compensation enough for equality, yeah? So bishop f8. Queen c7, rook c8, queen f4. Now black regained the pawn, taking on c4. Knight e5 was played. Exchange on c1. Uh, and now, okay, black played knight d7. That pawn on b7 is hanging here. Yeah? Knight d7, but for some reason, Stockfish says that uh, this is a big mistake uh, because of rook c8. Okay, the rook cannot be taken because of queen f7, yeah, and then queen e6, so queen e7, and now bishop d5 was played, yeah, and again this after the game analysis suggests that rook c7 was actually stronger and winning for white, this would have been huge for white if, if he managed to win, but okay, he played bishop d5, knight takes e5, d5, rook e5, rook f, bishop f7, king g8, and now, yeah, why not pick up a second pawn with bishop g6, 
maybe in time travel white thought that he was just winning on the spot because it is a, i mean <coughs> if black does not have rook f5 then it just does win on the spot but he just missed the only defense rook f5 and now everything was exchanged okay and just a draw with opus called bishops wow big missed chance for 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 white and italy so let's see the other games if they if it would have had impact on the match board two meister against mesa again a lot of changes in the position what happened to that minority attack what happened to this to the king side very very messy position uh, we can count and see that white is a pawn up but in such a position i mean er everything is depends on the concrete circumstances well, last move is rook f3 and uh, what is probably the problem here for black is that he can't easily get rid of the pin and the white's threat is rook f1 so how does black defend the knight knight e6 is not a solution because white will simply take the queen cannot move because white will simply take so maybe it just uh, it just over if like black cannot save the piece it's just winning for for bl for white okay kalinchev won as expected we saw the position after uh, bishop d7 bishop c3 queen c5 yeah this was played bishop b4 check on f6 King b1, knight c3, okay, and white gets mated, so he resigned, this was expected, and on board 4, we have a drawn double rook endgame. So, uh, probably it would not have mattered, because Meister will win on board, to board 2, this is a draw, and Kalinchev won on 3, and that's already 2.5 points, but now it just, uh, it's a Germany would have won anyway now it's just more comfortable so they will likely win 3-1 let's see so germany will continue their winning streak 100 percent score all matches won and they will have a uh, provided that england england also win their match they will have a two-point advantage ahead of the last round when a, even a drawn match would suffice <coughs> so Okay, an end game here, which looks completely winning for black. And the knight cannot move, yeah, because the pawn is falling. And here, white, I mean, black has two extra pawns, and should probably win without too much trouble. So Kosten will win on board two. Chapman and Binom, yeah, Chapman was worse in the end game, still is worse. Although the perimeter is very small here, white is bunkering up, so uh, should be able to hold the draw. And that probably means that England has also won their match. The draw on board three was an early one, and Povach beat Kivimaki. We had this position where there was this g3 played. King g7 when we said that I, no I noted that I said that <coughs> it appears that black doesn't know what he's doing yeah rook b2 rook c8 rook c1 I mean rook c1 just take that knight on e4 I mean that must be done that knight, not knight must be taken because it's black's best piece rook c1 rook c7 knight e3 rook c8 rook c2 okay uh, postponing the decision but until when h5 h4 a3. This also indicates that white wasn't sure what to do. Rook h8. There's nothing on the h file, but okay. Now bishop takes e4, finally. D takes e4. And now rook h1. White tries to oppose on the c file, but... Uh, um, sorry, on the h file. But again, there was nothing there, so... I mean, once black recaptured with the d pawn, the natural plan is to start uh, pushing these pawns. 
for some reason here stockfish says c4 was best okay and the point being that if this pawn is taken then there must be some point here to white's play and that's likely rook d1 i would say and uh, i guess rook d1 yeah queen somewhere queen b6 queen c3 and well some problems yeah okay he didn't take h3 he didn't play c4 i mean h3 king f2 now rook goes back rook c1 rook df8 queen b4 so eventually just probably white will start pushing black's problem is that it's completely passive the bishop is out of the game and the, the weak king so it is lost and black cannot do anything to change in spite of white's vacillating play so rook d1 finally defending the d4 pawn and c4 is a threat now knight d5 knight d5 queen d5 knight g6 yeah so just losing a piece knight d5 was actually the big mistake knight d5 take take knight g6 king g6 queen f8 and white one so england will win the match um so chapman also draw drew that's already 2-1 and costen will win so that will be a 3-1 win germany will also win the match they also actually already won it's two and a half oh, it's actually 3-1 we have it official so both teams winning 3-1 and staying in first and second place yeah those are the winners first and second place of the s65 section uh, so let's go back to s50 <coughs> i can see the comment that says that italy and iceland the match is over but probably that is not true as i can see board one still there i see hertarsson still thinking so let's let's go there and see what's going on so they they exchange queens mm and uh, it's definitely white pushing for a win but black is pretty active yeah? so the rooks are active and uh, black doesn't really have weaknesses so it's not going to be quick this one white will definitely try but it will take a while in the meantime oh what Godena beat Peterson. how did that happen We joined with the position when it was uh, 96 was played, just a second. Yeah, this was the position. And I said this is going to be a draw. And it must be a draw. So let's see what happened here. G3, stopping knight f4. Okay, h5, king d3, f5, f4, bishop c7, queen c, king c4. Okay, white managed to activate the king, yeah? Knight d8, probably intending e5 b4 takes takes knight b7 b5 so white obviously made some progress and black did not create anything much on the other side of the board pretty sure he could have used his king in a better way maybe king d5 king b5 earlier on king d6 now b6 bishop b8 knight c5 okay knight takes c5 bishop c5 king d7 king b5 and <laughs> That's really amazing transformation. So, okay, I mean, all credit to Godena winning that, what I thought was a dead drawn position, yeah? So, e5, takes, takes, bishop e3. So, the problem is bishop f4, yeah? And then uh, b7, b8, h4, bishop f4, and just a simple, uh, simple pawn endgame collecting everything the problem is the g5 doesn't work fg5 and white arrives first h3 b7 and king b6 yeah this is fastest only move takes only move only move only move and it's a mate wow amazing stuff uh totally unexpected yeah especially as on board four we had a win by black we saw the, the position it was winning we had yeah it was just uh, crushing 
let me just see the position we saw it wasn't this yeah it was this position yeah so queen f2 was played bishop d4 queen g3 check king a7 queen f3 bishop a4 it's just that the the, the light the bishops are stronger than the rooks here as the king is very weak rook d2 queen d5 check rook c2 uh, white is willing even to part with some material to save the king but that doesn't really happen yeah and it's game over as now full rook will fall so a yeah, very impressive uh, win by Thoralson, surprising with long castle in the opening and then just outplaying his opponent but thanks to Godena's uh, Godena's uh, surprising victory the Italians have drawn the match and now everything again hinges on on Hertarsson on board one just like yesterday yeah, the match was tied and uh, I was expecting a draw because it was a draw but he somehow squeezed out a win after move 100 and I expect something similar happening here it will be a long game uh, white is safe he can maneuver he can keep rearranging the p the pieces and try to probe even though I must say that black's position is very solid here and uh, not easy to breach on the other hand white does have some pawn weaknesses even a3 even g3 in some long-term future so they all need some sort of care I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw but in view of yesterday's games a game uh, by Hertarsson I wouldn't be surprised if he somehow squeezes out a win here so this is, is going to be critical and likely critical for the for the championship because uh, Italy is leading Iceland by a point and in case of a drawn match they will continue lead to lead uh, ahead of Iceland however if Iceland wins then they will overtake Italy and the, at the top of the table so I just wanted to check the pair uh, the standings to see because USA already won 4-0 and they are on 13 points yeah and if Italy for example draws this match I don't think they can uh, ask for more that's the maximum I would say they can get uh, then they will be equal on USA and then Iceland will be on 12 but if Iceland wins they are on on 13 together with USA and likely England on 12 and Italy on, on 12 so very very tough uh, and intense situation in the standings as well depending on this one game so USA won 4 nil. let's see how the English are doing against Montenegro uh, after bishop f2 white played king e2 bishop g1 king d3 f6 and now e4 probably white concluded that he won't be able to keep the pawn on e3 for too long and now uh, in order to defuse that idea of bishop e8 oops wrong arrow Uh, black will play g5 at some point but uh, the question is how to do that for example it's possible maybe to go bishop h2 king d3 and now e5 and after f takes e5 bishop takes e5 yeah, and then maybe g5 in order not to go okay, this still has to count with f4 however the problem with this is that after the let's say the bishop moves and g5 uh, black will obtain a Past pawn, and this will be simply decisive. So that's, uh, and if white does not play f4, keeps the pawn on f3, black will play g5, everything will be protected. Then the king will try to get to c5 to push through b5. White will seek to keep the blockade by putting a king on c4, and then it's a question whether black can maneuver against these weaknesses. For example, the bishop will obviously move from e5. Yeah, and then perhaps king e5 king f4 to attack f3 in the meantime black white will have to defend that pawn with um, bishop d1 so it's going to be a it's a matter of, of uh, how wide apart these weaknesses are so one weakness that white needs to defend is the b5 threat and the other one will be f3 pawn however this is just one possible collocation of of the pawns on the 
uh, on the uh, king side uh, Adams is thinking he can perhaps try other yeah another one is I guess pushing g5 fg fg and having this structure so again uh, the task here is to determine which one is more favorable I mean another idea is perhaps to to go bishop h2 king e3 and now not touch the pawns but go king d6 the idea being that if bishop e8 black can actually sacrifice that pawn in order to get his pawns rolling the, and the point like I said that these three double pawns cannot make a passed pawn against these two pawns on the king side so that's another idea worth considering so king d6 if perhaps white can go after the let's say this this and white can maybe go after the e6 pawn but that again uh, doesn't help much because again creating a passed pawn is not possible as this bishop control d5 square so all these considerations yeah it's something that Adams needs to think about and after the time control he's thinking the time on the clock is not right obviously yeah, but um, he's thinking maybe I can see that yeah the game is still ongoing the, it's there they're sitting at the board yeah so I would expect black to win this yeah let's see Ems if he has moved with his conversion phase sort of the knights have been exchanged still a pawn up for for white very strong knight on g5 not real counterplay by black so this is winning longer let's say medium term yeah not immediately but it should be winning I mean ideas maybe bishop e4 to exchange the bishops that's one idea that comes to mind uh, another one is to, to make I mean okay that's a more tactical idea which is to uh, think about the d4 push whether that changes something or not and of course white can always maneuver put the bishop on the same on a safe spot bring the knight to e4 maneuver with the pieces but I think white has maximized maybe the bishop can drop back to c4 if white doesn't want to exchange it uh, and uh, and it's probably timed for something more concrete yeah something to uh, take the game to the next level and get closer to the uh, let's say more direct conversion phase what happened on board three okay so we do have a Kurken game uh, we had this position after rook, rook, no, rook, where was it, rook c2, yeah, this was it. So white decided to actually seek the rook endgame himself, but this should be a draw. Uh, I mean, there, there was a, this, uh, I mean, perhaps not classical, but the famous, let's say, game between uh, Geller and Fischer in the Curacao. And it was exactly this um, rook endgame, three against two, with the e passed pawn. But the difference was that uh, the black king was cut off along the f file. Uh, it was a draw, yes, but Fisher didn't analyze properly and in fact lost the game. So uh, you may perhaps want to check that one. Here the problem is that the king uh, gets to the f and e file and this is really a elementary draw h3 king f6 okay and uh, yeah this was the position with rook on f file just that the black king was cut off on the king side somewhere in that game fisher geller so rookie one king e5 king f1 okay this will be a draw so in view of the draw on okay nothing really has changed we expect a 3-1 victory for 
for England and that will bring them to I think 12 points one less than USA who won they're on, on 13 but will likely be equal either with Italy or Iceland depending how their, their match ends and on board four <coughs> okay some more maneuvering happened after Queen A4 uh, no actually when were we this was the Queen A4 we saw Queen E1 was played Queen G4 check okay King Rook G3 Queen F4 E3 it's surprising that white can hold like this I don't expect him to somehow but um, somehow okay probably some more plays necessary okay king h7 king g2 check go back now check from c6 we were there already and rook f3 well some stiff resistance by by white i'm not sure how black should have allowed this exchange because as i mentioned black's advantage is white's weaker king and any exchange of any piece only helps white without either a rook or without a queen there are no mating attacks and there are no attack on the queen and uh, and white has made significant improvement of his position by an exchange so maybe what Kiru missed is that okay after this exchange he can't take on h4 because there is queen f7 check but here likely what's important to calculate is what happens in the pawn end game and again that king on h7 hurts black otherwise you would think that this should be good for black because he has a passed pawn but the king is fast and d4 happens so this is likely some sort of a draw so it appears that surprisingly to me at least that Kirill did not maneuver as technically well as he usually knows and allow this exchange of rooks uh, which will likely save it will save white it won't save the match for them though because we saw net of one Stanovsky was a draw we saw that position with the bishops yeah and uh, what we saw was something here yeah bishop e7 and that was pretty much it it appears that earlier white was winning at least judging from the from the evaluations by stockfish made automatically when the game is over so this was the situation before when uh, black played the natural king g6 and apparently this was losing and let's see what the engine says b5 b6 h5 and now white played king d3 where instead he should have gone forward so b7 and king b5 going after that bishop leaving the bishop to deal with these pawns not that easy to figure out so let's see the line king c6 h4 king d7 bishop g1 ah, the, uh -huh, so the problem actually is that the bishop is trapped yeah so bishop a7 bishop a7 h2 and now it's obviously it's clearly winning for white as he's a piece up and the deep one will decide the game so bad judgment by white or simply bad calculation a missed win which well in view of the draw on board four and Georgiev uh, failing to to win an advantageous position would have given them a, a, a draw in the match that would have been a huge surprise but well some luck for team alkaloid or perhaps some sloppiness i would say because they were favorites and should not have probably allowed to have a situation where every, everything would, would hinge on on uh, uh, white's precision yeah so draw on board four we already saw the position this was the type of position that we had but now the engine again is saying okay this was more or less what we saw the engine is actually saying that maybe black was winning uh, king f7 a3 
and now bishop h7 and some draw was great and here the engine suggests bishop g6 and I'm just curious how can black be better here and why should black be better here oh so the idea oh, this is a nice idea actually king f4 and now bishop b3 yeah? winning a piece oh well still even here is this actually winning let's say takes 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 and uh, but this well this is still not very clear because when while white go, black goes after that pawn white will start pushing with e pawn so one way or another uh, black had to try wow and then <laughs> Wow, really a bad match for the Macedonian team, but they were, I mean, badly played, the, the games were badly played. Except for Nedev, the others really missed a lot. But they will win the match and that's what counts, yeah. That's what counts. So, let's go back. Okay, in the S65 section, we already know that both leading teams will win their matches 3-1. Uh, and... Uh, that's decided there so let's stick to these matches as to in the s50 black decided that he couldn't stay passive just marking time with the rooks and went for this g5 push not sure what he achieved because does he really want to take on h4? He didn't take, or hasn't taken so far. So, not quite clear. In the meantime, White will likely land the knight on d6, a nice square that paralyzes the rooks. And again, we have uh, some parallel with yesterday's game by Hertarsson. You remember he was. He had this very nice knight on f5 and he was maneuvering it, yeah? And he got it to c6, which I didn't like. Yeah? But eventually that knight won him the game. You remember? Uh, got to f5, won that bishop, that, that pawn on g7 and won the game. And here he has two knights. So <laughs> perhaps this is a good omen for, for Hjartarsson. Okay, if they win, it will be a huge win ahead of the last round. And definitely good winning chances here. He has definitely had it. He's been having a very good event. Winning matches on board one in the last two rounds is tremendous. And not only that, but also winning the matches for his team. Not only his games on board one, but also those games being decisive for the final result of the matches of his team. So this is really, really massive. So I expect to knight d6. Probably there are also alternatives. Maybe knight f2 is possible. Maybe taking on g5 is possible. Mm, so, mm, some alternatives, surely. Maybe a move like bishop f3 is also possible, exchanging bishops, because that bishop is pretty stable on g4. Doesn't do much, but it's stable. Okay, so let's we'll we'll come back here. Let's see what Adams decided. So he did play bishop h2, the move I was suggesting, and it will okay. King e3 must come. I mean f5. I don't know. Doesn't look right. Though it is possible the uh, white can't do much on the on the king side. So any stabilization that happens is welcome so whether f5 will make sure that uh, his remaining pawns are on light squares where they can't be attacked and then it's a matter of whether white establishes a blockade on the light squares and it, at the same time um, prevents further damage on the king side which would give black an additional passed pawn so king e3, okay, for the time being, white doesn't touch the f-pawn. And now king d6 is one of the options, but probably 
Adams will think whether G5 or E5 first should be played. Remains to be seen. Let's see what M's decided. So here he decided to keep the bishop on a safe spot, C4. But now something strange happened. I don't know why. Why Rook F8 was played? Just dropping the the pawn on E5. This is really difficult to understand why. Why did just Black give up the pawn? Really strange. It's a, like really a dead giveaway. Okay. So some developments here. H4 played. Still a draw, obviously. Now the decision is whether to keep the pawn, take on h5, play g4, maybe. It's not quite clear how white gets out of the prison here, yeah? After g4, for example. Okay, gh4 played. I guess that's also possible. King h4. And then just black keeps the rook on the fifth rank the point being that white cannot uh, move the king to the to support somehow the e3 pawn and take over the defense from the rook yeah just at marking time whenever king g3 is played rook f5 stopping king f2 and it's just just over this is this is a draw Let's see what happened in the gear giri. Okay, so rooks were exchanged. Now in the queen endgame. White does not suffer for his bad king any longer. So 40 minutes. Wow, it's a, it's a lot of time for Gergiev, but he should have used it better earlier, I think. Yeah, a bit unfortunate. Okay, let's see if you have comments. No comments. Okay. Comments. Oh, okay, so we have the pawn in game. And uh, should be a draw. As the king is centralized and d4 can happen, so. But we will see. Yeah. Only three minutes left for. for white, and this could be an issue. Especially in some situations if where white is forced to go for some long variations where calculation is required. We will see, yeah? But this should end fairly soon as... Well, pawn and games tend to end pretty soon. The only thing that can uh, make it go longer is uh, Gergiev's time. He has 40 minutes, so he can spend a lot of time thinking, yeah. So it's... Uh, It, we will see. Yeah? What's certain is that uh, black cannot lose, and that means that uh, North Macedonia Al Khalid have won their match. Okay, a4 played. Not that it changes much. Yeah, just king f4, king e4. I think just by staying in the center, king f4, king e4, white doesn't risk without even probably creating a passed pawn with d4 as these two pawns actually are quite good at uh, uh, defending uh, against a possible king on d5 yeah so why just marks time i think that should be in the way though nothing wrong with d4 though on the other side hand so okay some calculation from white still required when to play d4, whether to play d4, and so on. Let's go back to Hjartarsson. What did he decide? Okay, a5. This is not something I I considered, but obviously possible. Opening the position, opening the bishop, though for the time being it's not very active. 
but certainly uh, getting some squares. Just imagine a situation when, let's say, uh, taking on e5, then white takes with the d knight, and then the other knight comes to d6, and after gh, gh, maybe the king comes to f4 or d4. Just a tremendous uh, domination on the dark squares and so deeply into black's territory. So, e5, yeah. Fourteen minutes to eighteen minutes. It will take some time for sure, but good winning chances for white. Let's check Adams. What did he decide? Okay, he went king d6, as I said was one of the options, and now bishop e8. And now the decision is whether to go g5 or king c5. I would expect king c5 because it's more. Oh, e5. Okay. e5. So, the, the, the point is that, um, the point is that uh, the pawn on g6 doesn't really hang, as that allows black to advance with the pawns with a4 or b5, so it's indirectly protected, and with e5, uh, the pawn on f4 hangs, and now again it's the same decision for white. Does he push f5, as he could have earlier on, or he takes, and if f takes e5, again it's interesting how black will recapture, because uh, both f takes e5 and king takes e5 makes sense, as they maintain the blockade of on the dark squares and the f4 square, again with the idea of sacrificing that pawn on g6 in order to advance with the queen side pawns. One way or another, I mean, f5 is probably bad because after the exchange, let's say, king c5 and uh, the pawns are going forward, so that's probably bad. So I guess f takes e5 must happen. Let's see what happened here. Rook e5. Black is probably still in a state of shock. Why he left the defense of that pawn on e5? And the pawn endgame, king e4 being played. Yeah, white can even put the king on e5. Yeah, just stay there dominating. And uh, just, yeah. Stay there. Okay, let's go back. E5, David is thinking. Here we have Nikcevic thinking. Seven minutes left for the remainder of the game, so uh, still some time to think, though not too much. Okay, and M's. Well, very comfortably two pawns up. <coughs> Let's see. Okay, ah, okay. Miljanic Fleer still ongoing. Okay, so White tries to. Ah, so that's. White gave up the a3 pawn. Now goes rook f8, and the plan is to take that pawn on h5 and somehow try to maybe cut off the black king and win with the g pawn, but this is. This is probably too far fetched. The problem is that uh, in any moment rook h8, for example, happens, king f2 can just attack the pawn on g2. So this is a draw. Let's see if David came up with something. No, still thinking, still calculating. There is time for it. There is time for calculation. 14 minutes. But not an enviable situation for Italy here. They had a lucky break 
on board two Godina winning that endgame. They should have lost the match by now, but but okay, they are still fighting. They are still fighting. They, they really have a good team event here. Uh, especially the key match being beat, be, beating USA. Takes on E5, knight D5. As I mentioned, the other knight is poised for the D6 square. And the king behind that knight can be very comfortable on d4. Centralized, defending the knight on e5, and uh, uh, just on a more active spot. <coughs> I mean, if black is to do something, he must do something with the rooks. The rooks are not very active right now. So, but it's difficult to activate them as well because the, the white pieces are controlling so many squares and uh, the knights are very f good at discovering the central files and with those, all this being said I don't know if there is something to be said about rook d1 not sure what happens with this exchange on g4 though in that case and now I don't know maybe even h5 or simply taking and uh, something like knight d6 maybe but this definitely some exchanges helped the rooks because they, they got some files and, and ranks to work with so maybe it makes sense to activate the rook maybe I mean uh, with that idea in mind also opening the g-file makes sense yeah gh gh and then maybe moving the bishop and uh, trying to become active on the g-file okay let's go to Adams ah so he took on e5 with the pawn king d3 king c5 so he makes sure that the pawns will start rolling bishop g6 okay that pawn was pretty irrelevant because uh, Anyway, white cannot create the passed pawn here, as it's controlled by the bishop. Now the pawns will start moving forward, and the question again is whether white can establish some sort of blockade, which uh, is difficult to to foresee, as, like I said, the, the danger of getting the king to e3 and perhaps taking some pawns and advancing here will be difficult to defend against but okay well, let's see yeah it's it's interesting to see yeah five minutes left only for white okay now either b5 or a4 both will happen and what sort of guarantee well, it's not really guaranteed, but mm, that okay. M's one. We have it official on the scoreboard. In fact, after rookie five, black resigned. Some hallucination, most likely. Yeah, and Milanich Fleer is drawn, also officially. Yeah. So what happened was rook f8, rook b5, rook h8, king f2, and just everything. Okay, expected. Yeah. So England wins the match. 2-1 up and Adams playing for a win oh. likely a 3 win up yeah? let's check the pawn end game in the Georgiev game so white landed at king on e5 and uh, so King f7 most likely will come. Still calculation is necessary because okay d5 d4 will happen cd cd and then white will still need to make some moves. Perhaps just king d5 king e5 with the pawn on d4 and waiting there. Let's see. Yeah. What's certain again is that I mean, we have two certain matches, England winning, North Macedonia, Alkaloid winning, USA winning, 
and the only unclear moment is the uh, match between uh, Iceland and Italy with uh, Hjartarsson playing for a win against David though uh, things are far from clear so the Rooks got some breathing space GH was played GH Bishop d1 and King f2 defending the bishop <coughs> so white does have isolated pawns that can become targets not now because they cannot be attacked and the rook on c3 defends both of these pawns as while the one on h4 perhaps can be attacked with rook d4 So we will see what Black decides to do. But somehow I get the impression that this opening of the files helped Black the rooks and increased his chances to save the a draw. If that happens, as we said, Italy will remain in the lead together with USA on 13 points and Iceland and England would be sec uh, third and fourth with 12 uh, North Macedonia Alkaloid with their win are on 10 points that's two behind the four leading teams so not really a big chance of ending with a medal a bit unfortunate I would say as they had a really good run and they had uh, they had their chances and at such tight team events it's always you can pin it down to just one single game or one single move that could have changed everything and I think for for Alkaloid that was the very early in the tournament uh, in the match uh, between them and USA when uh, Stanoyevsky missed this shot rook f3 which would have turned the lost position into a winning one and instead of a 2-2 result as the match finished they would have won 3-1 beating the main favorites and things would have been different so I think you can pin it down to this particular moment when, when they missed their chance it's always like this, you know, in, in tournaments, whether they be individual tournaments or team team events. You never know when your chance comes and wh which chance turns out to be the uh, the crucial and decisive one. Uh, that's why whenever there is a chance, you must take it. Sometimes you are fortunate and uh, you're rewarded or given a second chance, maybe sometimes even a third chance later on when you miss some in the beginning. But sometimes not therefore you never know what will happen so the safest thing to do is to take your chance when it happens unfortunately what happened was that uh, Stanowski wasn't really aware that he had a chance so that's that's how it goes it was a lucky break for the Americans and as this it stands they are in contention still for first place so that definitely was a uh, good push for them black thinking eight minutes left let's see the Adams game so he started pushing with b5 and bishop e8 so white's chance is to latch onto the pawn b5 and thus not allow uh, the king for example to move forward and then of the pawns follow up so let's see a4 is a move that can be made without much thinking though black may want to improve the position of the bishop first it's not clear where he needs it but uh, um, an, an idea for, for black is actually to sacrifice that pawn for example something like let's say a4 a3 and then king b3 
and when white takes just a2 king, bishop c4 check king b2 and when black when white sacrifices the bishop it's an elementary win for black because uh, his remaining pawn is safely guarded and uh, it's uh, uh, an extra piece so that's one winning idea that comes to mind and so it's also probably uh, white needs to defend against that by putting a king on c2 which on the other hand begs the question can black start with king b3 then and if bishop b5 then a4 how does white stop a3 a2 and king b2 Well, but the, the idea of king b3 is to stop king c2, yeah? So let's see, king b3, if white doesn't take, then just b4, a4, a3, it's all, they're all coming, yeah? So bishop b5, a4, bishop c4, check, king b2. Okay, king b3 played, yeah? So maybe I just calculated well. So it just appears winning, yeah? Yeah, another smooth performance by Adams, yeah. Uh, smooth in the end game. Before that, it was smooth enough, I would say. Uh, he kept some chances in the in the uh, in the end game or in the early middle game. Didn't let the position to dry up completely, and uh, then outplayed um, White. Well, that's world class to you. Yeah, you see how a world class player outplays lesser opponents, and in a classical way, it's not like he's taking risks or anything, doing something out of the ordinary or something that is not in line with his style. No, he just plays the the way he normally plays, and he wins thanks to the fact that the quality of his moves is higher than the quality of the moves of his opponents, and this accumulates. Yeah better move or worse move better a little bit better move a little worse move in quality i mean and after a while this builds up and uh, gives uh, winning advantages here oh very very nice here end game that leaves us with only one game to follow which is perhaps the decisive one not only for the match but maybe even for the championship even though there will be a big battle and a lot to play for tomorrow so what happened is that after king f2 black gave the check bishop rook f8 bishop f3 and now rook g4 so uh, black is going after the the pawn on h4 then what needs to be calculated is the knight g6 fork whether it works or it doesn't work yeah and this implies whether the pawn on h4 is hanging yeah but for some reason it looks I mean, obviously, yeah, knight g4, hg uh, shouldn't worry black because he will regain, let's say, knight e5, gf, knight f3, and uh, this is just a draw. Otherwise, um, okay, rook g4, yeah, that's the position on the board. Otherwise, yeah, the, the rooks look active and. Uh, Somehow it feels that white misplayed this. Yeah, maybe the t5 move wasn't right. I mean, it looked tempting, looked tempting, but it opened the files for the rooks, and David managed to to take good use of this, to take good use of of the open files. So now it appears that black is not in danger here. I mean, there is okay. White can play king e3, and now rook h4, knight g6, rook e8. I'm not sure if it works. No, it doesn't because f3 is hanging. King e3, so maybe just rook h4. No, sorry. What am I doing? The, the bishop is hanging. Yeah. No, bishop f3, then knight f3. Yeah. But already this looks 
I don't know, rook f5, rook g3, something. With, with, with these pawn weaknesses, it appears that... Uh, it appears that black is out of danger. Yeah. It appears that black is out of danger, yeah. So let's see. Uh, I mean, bearing in mind the experience from yesterday, uh, I doubt that Hjartarsson will just simplify with knight g4 and enter this drone in drone position. So he will seek ways to keep ge the game going. Yeah. Okay, actually we forgot about the pawn endgame in Plotkin Georgiev. Okay, so we had this. The white exchange played d4 okay see king e7 now he played d5 i was thinking maybe just keeping the king on d5 and e5 was enough but okay d5 king d7 d6 played and now okay probably just both sides move left and right yeah now king d5 king e5 for white maybe king d8 king d7 for black as I think any attempt to try something with f4 should backfire because then white is very close to capturing the pawn on g6 and white is too far, black is sorry, too far to go after these pawns. So it appears just like a draw. Oh well, it was expected but it was Gergiev's fault I think exchanging those, allowing the exchange of the rooks. Maybe he just miscalculated the pawn endgame. Okay, b5, king d5 doesn't change much. Doesn't change much. Now, fast move by white, nothing really to think about. So, let's go back to board number one. Knight d6 played, okay. As I said, trying to keep the game going. So why is he giving up the pawn on h4? So let's say something like now bishop f3, knight f3, rook h4. Probably for that pawn on b7, but normally this shouldn't bother black much because he has a passed pawn, very active rooks and weaknesses to attack. So this should be okay, bishop f3 played. So this should be fine for black, not risking at all anymore. And with, with, with play happening on both sides of the board, the, the, the past h pawn and things on the queen side, the knights are not that great, okay? They are short range pieces, so uh, some knight will be probably needed to keep a guard on the h pawn and the other one will probably either join or try to do something on the queen side, but white's uh, forces will be dispersed, unlike what we, we, we had at the beginning, especially before e5. So white misplayed this, that's for certain, and a great result for the Italians in case of a draw, yeah. They remain in the lead, only joined by USA. Let's see if Adams wrapped up, King, okay, probably just uh, the game finished because white's time ran down to zero, and uh, okay I'm pretty sure why did not lose on time so probably just resigned and the pawn end game probably going to be a draw as well Kirill can think for as much as he wants but nothing really to change there why just moves left and right d5 v5 it's nothing to be done so let's go back bishop f3 Okay, there is also rook f3, but uh, even without one pair of rooks, that that should be fine for... Oh no, well, I mean, rook f3, black cannot take on h4 because there is this check and knight g6 winning the rook. So rook f3 is possible uh, 
any Fruk f3, Knight f3 defends the knight, the pawn on h4, but just allows black to take another pawn and get another passed pawn. This is definitely fine for for black as the rook is very active and all white's remaining pawns require attention, so it's not really shouldn't really be a problem for black here to to draw at least I would say because sometimes uh, the rook and, and pawn can be better than two light pieces you can take a look for example at the uh, second game of the match in 1985 between Karpov and Kasparov which was the after the terminated one when they had another match in 85 the second match the one that Kasparov won and became world champion in the second game of that match we had there was such a situation where Kasparov was black and he had a rook and an outside passed pawn on the A file uh, and Karpov had a bishop and a knight and in fact black was winning that uh, position because it was rook and a pawn that passed pawn things were equal on the king side and black was winning by combining play uh, on the queen side trying to advance that pawn and going uh, attacking white's king side objectively it was winning for black Kasparov misplayed it and the game ended in a draw but ever since seeing this game I have remembered that uh, uh, rook and pawn can be quite unpleasant in an end game, especially if that pawn is a passed pawn and the, the, the pieces need to guard against that passed pawn or are disorganized and then need to defend. So that's why, okay, so this was played, yeah, rook f3, knight f3, rook a4, this was played. So that's why I think, okay, knight b7, rook a3 likely. It will be a mass simplification probably. Rook a3, knight d8, rook c3, knight c6, rook c5. Yeah. Okay, rook a3 played. Let's see if this is a final. It must be final. Okay, no moves. Kirill Georgiev. Likely the same. Black is thinking, but what to think about here? Maybe calculating f4, but that's also draw as white collects the pawn and then we have the same thing king is moving left and right so rook a3 played expect knight d8 or maybe even knight d4 yeah maybe knight d4 makes more sense because the knight on b7 is defending at pawn or knight d5 yeah and then take and then maybe try to use the past pawn yeah. Okay, knight d4 play. But it will, be it will be really, really, really funny if we get something like this. Let's just say rook a4, knight c6, rook h4, knight somewhere. Okay, just, just to illustrate my point, okay? And let's say knight e5, doesn't matter. Rook h1, c6, rook c1, something. Okay, I don't know, knight d6 or whatever. And then we get rook c6, knight c6. <laughs> This will be just incredible because then uh, nobody understands these positions. Two knights against pawns. Okay, there was this uh, there was this uh, kind of a diagram when the knights win and where like where the pawns stand and how the knights win. But here there are two pawns, and likely black will get rid of try to get rid of them. White will try to blockade them, then try to stalemate the king, and then give the river mate. But this will take forever. Probably they'll they'll finish by 10 p.m. or something. And uh, again, probably I will have to cut the commentary short at some point with the, my uh, prediction. Yeah, whether that be a draw or not. Obviously, I can consult the database, uh, table base, and tell you if it's winning or not. But that means nothing for the players who need to actually move this on the board hopefully we don't that get that far uh, but we will see you never know so rook a4 possibly allows king e3 so it's likely more precise to start with rook h3 and go after that pawn we will see yeah 
it's funny. I mean, if we get that, then Hjartarsson will get another marathon game second day in a row. Yeah, and he will push because he knows that's the best chance for the team and uh, the best chance for for gold. So, <laughs> but it's, I really hope that something else happens. Though it looks pretty realistic, to be honest, yeah, that we end up there. Okay, a5. So white doesn't, black doesn't go after the pawn, he goes a5. And now it's sort of a race, because the pawn is fast. Yeah, and the knights are not that great dealing with a pawn that is on the a file, and especially they are not very well coordinated. So this is getting sharp. Okay, Adams, nothing. I'm just checking if this finished uh, officially. Yeah, Kirill Gergiev. Probably nothing as well. So a5, knight c6, a4, and then it's a lot of calculations. Seven minutes for Hjartarsson, three less, almost four, less than four minutes for David. It will be. I mean, they will calculate whether the a pawn makes it, whether the c pawn makes it, whether that those pawns can be stopped somehow. The kings are far away. Especially the white king is far away from the a-pawn. This king can maybe somehow join the defense, but that also requires a lot of calculation. So this is very sharp. And it's actually, uh, all three results are possible. If white miscalculates somehow, the pawn can easily promote and win for black. Um, in a way, I think black is perhaps in less danger because he has this sort of saving idea of going after the pawns, yeah? And then sacking the rook for the remaining pawn. But that's a torture then, yeah? If his pawns are far advanced and he can get rid of them, then obviously it's a draw. But likely, I mean, it's difficult to say now, just uh, speaking in generalities, whether white can blockade some of those pawns or not. Anyway, if a5 shows that... Um, Black is trying also his chance. Yeah, I mean, if Italy somehow wins, then there will be 14 points, and uh, uh, that will be a huge, huge uh, situation for them before the last round. So huh, it will be curious, yeah. Okay, interesting game. I hope this was drawn. No moves have been made, but the clocks are not moving. That means that game was okay. Now we have it also on the board. It's a draw, and we also have it on officially. Adams won, so we are left with this game now. I'm just curious. I wanted to see Adams's result here. He started slow by drawing an inferior opponent, 2100 or something, but then he started winning a lot of games. Yeah, he's 6 out of 7. He drew Granat in 2165 and drew Shabal of 2465 and beat everybody else. The big Dansky, David, Olafsson, Kirill Georgiev and Dishman, and now Nikcevic. So except for Dishman, Everybody else was a grandmaster, so pretty, pretty convincing, yeah. And then the, the the style in which he has been winning has been also impressive. You could say his usual style, but style without allowing any chances, just playing high quality moves, moves that were of higher quality than of his opponents. So that has been pretty good for for him. So we see King E2. Okay, so uh, White understands the danger of the A pawn and just gets tries to bring the king as close as possible to the um, to the queen side to guard against that pawn. But don't forget that the same thing can happen on the king side. Let's say Rook H3, Rook H4. And then there are problems with the h pawn. 
Perhaps the idea is to get the king close enough to cover the C, the, the squares on the C file, so that then the rook will find it more difficult to control that pawn from behind. So it's all getting very sharp now. All getting very sharp. see what, what this happens let's see if you have any comments no comments nobody's typing anything fair enough and in fact the games seem to have finished all of them okay so we should have some conclusion soon enough here I see the the playing hole it's empty so this game finished quickly then okay let's stick around and see what happened yeah rook h3 played okay so now unless white defends the pawn with knight f5 black will have two passed pawns h and a after taking on h4 for example after knight c6 and and rook h4 even though a3 is still a threat yeah I, mean, I can easily see black winning this, you know. Somehow the pawns seem pawns seem too dangerous. That knight on b7 is really out of the out of the game. Okay, king c2, trying to control the a pawn. Rook h4 likely. a3 also but rook h4 i guess it's okay not long not much time on the clocks and since the game is finished then we should be getting moves in quicker succession now yeah it, i mean it appears that the, the, the a and h pawns are going in moving faster than that on c5 it appears that there is just no time for the c pawn but we will see i mean if it happens that black wins then it will be sort of unfortunate for herterson who kind of two two days in a row tries to to win the match for his team yesterday he managed but today he not only um, not only won't manage to win the match for his team but he will lose the match for his team which is pretty bad yeah that's even worse you're playing to win you, you, I mean he had a really safe position and he was playing for a win and then to have a, this complete turnaround from winning to losing at least a draw yeah i mean you can't win okay then at least a draw the match is drawn everything stays as it is but losing that that's huge and uh well that's the fate but then again i mean i don't know it just he lost control at some point i think that the, the main culprit is the move e5 when he opened the position for the rooks and after that i think he was carried away with the uh, with some sort of inertia that he's playing for a win when the position no longer required could allow it and then he, he misplays it still okay some some moves yeah okay but uh, uh, David thinking whether to take on h4 or to push a3 so let's see maybe he, he did not lose this but as things are it just doesn't look too great a3 played okay Knight c6, I suppose. I'm not sure if knight f5 makes much sense. Because just the rook a2 check. And the problem is that after rook a2 check, rook h2, sorry, 
the king cannot approach the b pawn because there is rook b2 check and the knight on b7 that hapless knight on b7 is lost okay knight d6 played yeah he he realized that the knight must somehow come back now does black give check and push a2 what happens there so if check king b1 must be played take on h4 take on c6 still pretty sharp but the question is whether to take on h4 immediately or to give check first So a2 played first, okay. Only move king b3 should be played fast enough. King b2, sorry. Should be played fast enough. And difficult to say here what's most precise and then especially with little time on the clock. It's impossible to play precise moves. If something is winning, something uh, misses the win, lets the win slip or not. It's hard hard to determine without proper analysis also after the game and during the game impossible to say king b2 okay now what maybe check on a h2 maybe take on h4 rook a3 doesn't make much sense because king a1 so i expect taking on h4 taking on c6 maybe rook a4 with a tempo king a1 and h4 okay rook c3 okay this is trying to eliminate the danger that the c pawn posed so playing it safe yeah and this gives up the a2 pawn and does not win the pawn on h4 so maybe just allows white to consolidate somehow okay let's see King a2, okay, expected, rook c5 also expected, and this now is more likely that it will be a draw. Rook c5, now maybe just king b3, and if rook d5, knight f5, yeah, and the knights have a really good. Uh, control here making it difficult for the king to get into the game they should go to h7 g6 and then f6 perhaps king b3 okay that's expected so now rook d5 i suppose Yeah, this should be a draw now. The C pawn is not dangerous. Black is not getting to the H4 pawn. So. I mean, what can be perhaps a bit tricky is that, well, let's say rook d5, knight f5. The rook is latching onto both knights and neither can move. The king who is stuck on c4 cannot cross yeah, because the rook is limiting it. And then if black just comes to f6 or g6 to the king, he will threaten to take on f5 and, and win the pawn endgame. So there is some hidden danger for, for white there. You should probably somehow find a way to to untangle somehow but it's not quite clear how so let's see what happens there yeah, okay rook d5 played that was expected now only move knight 4 f5 because putting the other knight there just allows c5 and then one knight will be lost 
Okay, no, actually, sorry, there is 97 check. Okay, okay, sorry. So maybe that's also possible, but um, that's also possible. And then king c4, yeah. That maybe makes more sense because it, it kind of frees the knight to move. And then the king defends the knight on d4 and the other knight can move, yeah, back somewhere. On the other hand, that does not prevent the black king from coming in uh, faster with king f7. So let's see which knight white decides to put on. Ah, but maybe it's a positional draw. Because when the king steps on g6, there is 97 check. And take that rook. Okay, so probably probably both knight moves should work white can't go wrong but a decision still needs to be made yeah and as I said in case of a draw we have uh, Italy and USA leading with 13 points Iceland is second with 12 together with England they're both on 12 so two teams with 13 two teams with 12 and in distant fifth Al Kaluid with 10 uh, so uh, the, the, med the, the medals will be decided among the top four teams Oh, that will be likely the standings ahead of the last round. In the S65, everything is more or less clear. Let me just check the standings. If okay, Germany will be on 16, England on 14, and likely Slovakia on 12. But uh, those will be the top teams there I just want to see if they have okay they have actually Slovakia has also won so these are the top three teams who likely who will win the medals Germany England and Slovakia so let's see now okay Hertha's are still thinking but uh, One minute left. I don't know if he's thinking or, or the game just uh, finished, but uh, they just agreed to a draw. But uh, hard to say now. What we know is that the game did end, and uh, should be soon enough. And since it is soon enough, I cannot imagine another result than a draw, as neither side can win quickly from this position and we expect we know that the game finished so uh, we should be near the end of the game anyway yeah likely the game finished because I I, I, I doubt that Hartarsson would have left his run his time to run down to mere seconds when he had several minutes left it's just practical to, to play the the moves faster, especially as he had to choose just between one of the knight moves to f5. So, pretty sure the game finished already in this position. Black offered the draw and white accepted. Yeah, so white's time running out, that's for sure. That didn't happen, but and, uh, it was a, a draw. So I think uh, we can wrap up, yeah. As we have all the results, the, the top matches, very dramatic match on board one, Iceland against Italy. Uh, winning chances for Iceland definitely thanks to Hjartarsson's likely winning advantage on, on first board, but then things turn around completely. It appeared that David had winning chances, uh, eventually all finishing in a draw. 
elsewhere, the, the favorites won, USA, England, and Alkaloid. And the standings are, as I told them, Italy and USA on 13, Iceland and England on 12, and Alkaloid on 10. So, thanks for being here today. I hope you enjoyed the commentary, the games, the excitement. And tomorrow is the last round. Tomorrow is the round when the title of a world championship will be world champion will be decided. Nothing changes, no morning rounds. Thanks to, uh, to the organizers for that. And uh, yeah, I will see you same time.